What is up crew, it's your boy KSM, and on today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to easily draw clothing, and we're going to be going over things like the basic forms and how to do different types of volumes for your clothing, we're going to go over the different types of clothing folds, as well as how you can even simplify the clothing for those of you looking for maybe more of a stylized and or anime style. Now, if it's your first time here, welcome into the KSM crew. My name is KSM, and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, teaching everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design and I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania so if you guys are interested in some free art education or you like hanging out with my dog who is over here make sure to like and subscribe if you're watching from YouTube and if you're watching live from Twitch right now make sure to follow and I hope you guys enjoy today's stream now before we do get started here is the two references that we're gonna be working on today um, I forget which movie this is from I think it's from Van Helsing saying this is Hugh Jackman and this was just some random uh, Pinterest reference picture of some girl sitting down but you can actually grab these references here over on my discord channel for those of you who want to follow along live today now keep in mind that these sheets are only available when I'm live so if you are watching from YouTube make sure to join on the discord channel and also check out my live streams now here I'm also giving you guys two sheets this is the what uh, what we worked on last year when I covered how to do clothing and so you'll see here a few of the techniques that we're going to talk about today, though I'm hoping that we'll do something a little bit more today as well, especially when it comes to stylization and all of that stuff. Uh, and then last but not least here, here is a sheet from Bridgman as well as some MDJ, just covering some of the generic seven types of clothing folds. We'll go over these as we look at these references, but we'll talk about drop folds, pipe folds, diaper folds, spiral folds, half lock folds, zigzag folds, and not really as much of the inert folds but they do exist for your reference so again guys these are free to grab make sure to grab them and i guess with that let's get started on all the good stuff out here um but yeah how's it going everybody welcome back in uh those of you coming in right now from the live streams uh we got clop here um <laughs> billy thanks for the comments and everybody else coming in here all right so let's see here you just did a drapery class a couple weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. So hopefully this, this, this will be valuable to those of you who are here, but even if it's, um, maybe, you know, if it's your first time doing clothing, this will also be a beginner friendly tutorial too. So just can't keep that in mind there. Also, thank you for the follows Renfly, um, Vashesh Gal, uh, Popik and everybody else who's been coming in here. Thank you for joining in today. So let me go ahead and put away uh, this reference. We'll work on one of them for now. And I actually already started working on the rough mannequin for this one because I wanted to give us enough time here to actually focus on working on the actual clothing um, that we have here for our, for our character. Now, let me move. I want to move this one down. So again, these are going to be some of the three topics that we're going to be focusing on today. Um, let me move this reference so it's a little bit smaller and that way we have more room to actually uh, work on the drawing in full, right? So here I got here this nice juicy mannequin. Uh, for those of you who are more curious about how I uh, go over the mannequin structures and stuff like that, the rest of my boot camp basically goes over that pretty in depth. Primarily the first couple of days of the boot camp where I go over the structure of the human body and I show you guys how to simplify the human body into kind of these generalized forms of either cylinders, cubes, spheres and so forth. Now, interestingly enough, we're going to be talking probably a lot about uh, cylinders today because you'll see how, um, for example, clothing and fabric on sl on your sleeves and your arms uh, can vary greatly there. And so we'll probably do an example there where I'll, I'll kind of move out that arm. But let's kind of jump right in here. And I want to, before we jump into drawing out all the clothing, one of the most important things I think uh, that are really, really, really important for, for drawing clothing and stuff is being able to understand what is going on underneath the clothing. Because at the end of the day, fabric and clothing are just things that sit on top of the basic forms. And so if you, for example, take a blanket and you put a blanket over a ball, what you're going to get is you're going to get this ball here, right? And then you're going to get that blanket going over that ball, right? So it's going to, it's going to kind of uh, wrap around that form as you'll see here, right? Um, but if you put, if you put a, let's say, uh, I don't know, a box 
under or if you put a, if, if you put a blanket on top of a box then the fabric will just kind of situate itself on top of the box right and maybe it'll also cause some tension points there so so understanding what's going on underneath the fabric is actually going to be a big indicator for how we can uh, convey good realistic clothing and this is this is irrelevant um it doesn't matter i guess what i'm trying to say is uh what style you're doing uh what's more important is being able to understand kind of these basic rules okay so hopefully that makes some sense here we have kind of again um these uh two different types of shapes that we have and how they can kind of we, we actually put this to the side here we have random random blanket one random blanket two right so understanding the forms underneath i think is very very important and valuable um, because when i was first starting out with drawing and stuff one of the first things i did was this and let me know guys if this is relatable to you at all when i first started drawing i used to be like oh you know what let me just add a fold here and let me just put some wrinkles here and let me just put some wrinkles here and let me just go like this and let me just add some wrinkles everywhere that i'm seeing because that's what the reference has right like put an f in the chat if you've ever done that before you're like looking at the reference and you're just like oh yeah there's a lot of lines here okay there's a lot of lines here and then you're looking at it and you're like hmm it you know, I'm copying the reference, but for some reason it doesn't look nice, right? There's something about it that looks off, looks a little scratchy. You get what I'm saying? Uh, a, lot, a lot of F's in the chat. So we're going to try to avoid focusing on all the little details of the clothing and instead understand the bigger picture to then be able to create that structure um, that does make sense. And sometimes less is more. Um, if you take a look at a lot of your favorite animations, you'll actually see that there's not a lot of crazy details that go into the clothing at least not as much as you think there are a lot of techniques that artists can utilize to give the illusion of um of more detail and form so and we'll, and we'll incorporate some of that as well um and yeah welcome back in how's it going lindy uh, and everybody else who's coming in here hopefully you guys are doing well i can't complain it's a it's a weekend out here and yeah so what I'm going to be doing here for you guys is I'm just going to be laying out here the mannequin structure and I'm going to probably just draw out. Um, I'm trying to think here. I'm probably just going to draw out the the upper torso for this one and then we'll do we'll do a detail of how to drop the pant folds and stuff on a different reference but the reason why i actually wanted to use this reference today is because if you take a look at the character i feel like he's got a lot of um, different types of material uh, going on there and they're kind of varying there in different thicknesses and so this will be the next thing that we're going to be talking about a little bit later when we actually get into the uh into clothing and stuff is how different fabric thicknesses will actually create different types of folds or maybe not different types of folds but different um what's the word here density of folds so you could imagine if you were wearing a very thin maybe cotton t-shirt right that cotton t-shirt will probably fold a lot more than a very thick uh, fab uh, fabric like leather. So leather might not fold as much or depending on the type of leather, it might actually end up creating more folds because of gravity. So in this case right here, if you were wearing a cotton t-shirt, there might not be a lot of folds here because the gravity just pulls down the uh, the shirt right and so you'll end up having maybe a bunch of fabric kind of bunched up here but because the leather has its own uh, thickness and it's able to retain its shape better it might actually have more folds in uh, certain areas as well so these are going to be things that you'll want to think about and consider when you're drawing your characters right like are they wearing something that's a thick fabric or is it a thin fabric and how does that overall affect the um the overall look and pose because right now on the same side take a look at this right look at how the jacket there is a very smooth transition whereas if you were to maybe look at a sleeve of like a, a long sleeve shirt or something you might see something like this with a bunch of triangular folds here that kind of just you know naturally create themselves due to the folding of the fabric so yeah that's that's what we're going to be looking at as well um Oh, and thanks for the follow here, Upgraded. Welcome in, guys, to the Case and Crew. Again, if you guys are new here, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. I'm an educational art streamer here on Twitch, um, but that's not to say that my streams are boring or anything like that. At least I, that's what I like to think. I like to think my streams are relatively entertaining. And I also do enjoy, I think, I think for me, Saturday streams are 
my favorite streams because I feel like it's the most relaxed. You know, we have a lot more time on my Saturday streams um, than, I, than we do on my other days of the week. And so because of that, I feel like we can really dive into a lot of these topics um, that we're covering uh, today. While also being a little bit more relaxed about it. Entertaining and <laughs> educational. Yes, that is the goal. Um, so right now I'm just adding in these muscle forms. We don't have to actually, you know, again, we're going to be covering a lot of these. So don't worry too much if you're following along and you're not really understanding about all the anatomy. Um, if you guys are interested in the anatomy, again, I highly recommend you guys check out the previous days of my boot camp where we do go over all of those basic anatomical structures, um, including stuff like the torso, the arms. We go over basically all of them. And tomorrow on my YouTube channel, I'll actually be releasing, um, which day is it? I'll be releasing, I think, day 11 of my boot camp, which will be covering how to draw arms, um, the easiest way to draw arms. And so you guys can check that out if you are, um, if you're watching live right now and you're wondering what's, what's being uploaded over my YouTube channel. Um, but yes, we do have a boot camp out here. This boot camp is a self-paced boot camp that everyone can join in. It's free to join. Um, you know, so all that I ask is you guys, you know, make sure to follow my socials and stuff. That's all I, you know, that's the only, if there's anything here that you have to do, just make sure to follow my streams, check me out on YouTube and, uh, join the discord channel because that's where we're going to be uploading all the free resources, um, that exist as well. So you want to make sure you're, you know, leveraging free stuff because, in this day and age, you know, it's uh, we might not have the means to be paying for a full full length art course and stuff, maybe those online classes, which I'm sure, you know, are really good. There's a lot of great courses and I could definitely name a lot of great artists who um who are teaching those courses, but sometimes we don't have those means and so for those of you who are looking for something that's a little bit more accessible, um that is what my, that's the main intent there of my streams. Uh, I work, but still catching up here. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that, Lori. Thank you so much for, for being a supporter of the streams. Uh, yeah, thank you. I know you joined in recently too, uh, from, from the raid. So that's super awesome that you're hanging out here. Let's see. Yeah, so let me, I'm just, right now, all I'm really doing with you guys is I'm just building out that basic mannequin, um, but I'm taking some of the shapes here that we have, and I'm just making it look and feel a little bit more organic, you know? Um, and the reason why is because at the end of the day, yes, you know, these are boxes and all that stuff, but, you know, boxes can only get you so far, and I think it's nice to see some of the organic shapes here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut off at the knees, so I apologize for those of you who want to see maybe me, you know, drawing more of the legs and stuff. We'll actually be doing full body poses uh, later, later in uh, the week, so I think day 29 or day 30, I have to double check, but one of those days we're going to be covering um, how to draw different body types, and so... On that day, I'll be going over some full body poses with you guys, and we will definitely, you know, I'll make sure to to hit a few of those points when we cover drawing full body poses. Uh, I think I think day twenty nine we're going to be covering uh, stylized faces. So how do you do like how do you utilize and leverage things like shape language and all of that stuff to get some uh, interesting interesting uh, designs? So yeah. Yo, how's it going, Griffin? Yeah, we're back at it again, and thank you for the follow too, Arctic Duck twenty three. Uh, welcome in, everybody. If you guys are coming in here for the first time, I would genuinely love to know um, how you guys came across my stream today. How did you find it? Was it from uh, recommended? Was it from just scrolling through Twitch? Was it from the let me think uh, my YouTube channel? Do let me know what's what what brought you guys here and. If you guys have any questions, by the way, feel free to ask them, you know, um, I'm always open to answering questions and helping you guys out in however ways I can. So a big part of my stream is not just teaching particular topics and stuff, but it's also about just having conversations with you guys and in some ways trying to help uh, maybe be kind of like a kind of like a, a pseudo mentor in some ways, because I know a lot of you guys have talked about wanting to do mentorship and stuff like that. Which actually, um, a good question that I wanted to ask you guys is, if I did, 
hypothetically, I'm not, I don't have anything planned or anything, but hypothetically speaking, if I opened up a mentorship program, it would probably be a group mentorship program. But let's just say if I did open up a mentorship program, how many of you would be interested? Just like a, a general idea, because I'm, I, I'm, 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 let's just say I might be thinking about it, but also I don't know if I can do it because, you know, <laughs> I'm a, I have a pretty busy schedule. But let's just say if I were to open something up, um, would you guys be interested in that? Let me know in the chat. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a super expensive program. It'll, it'll definitely be a, you know, I try to make things as, as affordable as possible, but yeah. Um, what is the word next to shape design? Uh, simplification. Sorry if my handwriting is a little funky. Um, I was going through YouTube on how to draw as a beginner and came across your videos. No way. So you actually came from my YouTube channel, huh? That's super awesome. Uh, JK. Nice. That's, that's so wild. You know, I, I'm honestly, I don't know. I, <laughs> I get, I get surprised that people actually come in from my YouTube channel and they come here on Twitch. Cause I feel like most people who, who know about me, if they know about me on Twitch, like I've been around Twitch for a while, but I'm still fairly new to, I'm still fairly new to, to YouTube and stuff. I've only been uploading for about the past, like I think two months now, maybe a little bit less actually February. So yeah, almost two months, a little bit, a little bit close to two months. Okay. Um, so we have here, um, just kind of the legs and stuff like that. Again, you know, you don't have to draw out these things. You don't even have to draw out the mannequin if you don't want to. I'm just giving you guys kind of a rough kind of baseline to start off with because I feel like it's, it's nice to have, again, those, those kind of organic shapes. Now, once we kind of uh, draw out these organic shapes here, uh, I'm just going to kind of push this one down a bit more, give them more of a pectoral muscles here. Um, we'll, we'll go into actually adding in some of the clothing though. Again, I'm probably not going to be doing, uh, the clothing there for the lower portion of the, uh, the lower portion there of the, of the torso or the legs. So we'll probably just stick with the upper portion today just to kind of keep things nice and simple. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll work on the lower leg example that I showed you guys earlier. So I'll try to balance it out. Um, thank you for the follow, uh, mushroom rat unclear and also ELO welcome in guys. What kind specifically? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. And it's cool if you're not again, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep it nice and open. Um, yeah, maybe I'll make a poll or something. Um, but, uh, basically if I were to do, if I were to do a, a mentorship and stuff, the way that it would work is, um, we would come together and we would i would take a look at your work see see where you're at see what your goal is and then every session i would give you either i would give you some assignments to work on i would also um, critique your work and see what you can improve on and that would be kind of it so it'd be like a feedback session where you tell me what you want i give you some general guidance for where to go some general next steps i'll take a look at the work you currently have see what are some things that i feel like you could work on right now um, and then i will be expecting you to, to, to correct those things. And then the next time around, I'll take a look at that. Um, and so it'll also vary. I think I want to keep it relatively flexible, but I, the reason why I want to also do a group mentorship instead of one-on-one -on -one is because one, I, I don't have, I wouldn't have enough time to do one-on-one -on -one mentorships. Um, but two, I feel like the nice thing about group mentorships too, is that you get to really see where other people are at as well. And sometimes it's great to see, um, some of the things that they might be struggling with because it could also help you out um, in the things that you are struggling with. Right. Um, but anyways, this is going to be the rough little mannequin that we have here. Um, you know, just kind of some general, uh, general forms here that we have. And there you go. Also, um, Jay, how's it going? Welcome back in Jay. All right. So let's see here. Let me lower this one a little bit. And then we'll get started on um, applying some of the clothing. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you for the 100 bits, Dodger. 
Um, yeah, I, I will think about it. I think for me, the, the, the hardest thing is again, just my schedule. Um, I've been so busy lately and honestly, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might, I might take a, I might need a little bit of a vacation just because I'm kind of feeling a little bit of that burnout, you know, feeling like I've been working really hard as of recently and we all could use a bit of a break, <laughs> but I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think if I can find some way to manage my schedule, um, in a way that allows me to do some form of mentorship with you guys. Um, but in the meantime, um, in the meantime, I, you know, we have my streams here. And so this is why I always highly encourage you guys to just ask me questions now, ask me questions while I'm live. Um, because you know, you can treat this also as like a mentorship session. Sure. I'm not going to be drawing over your stuff directly, but, um, sometimes it's good to just, you know, have those questions answered. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to feel free to ask them. Uh, thank you for the follow too. Uh, Mache, Mache five, five, five. You need to rest from time to time. Yeah. hundred percent. This is a, this is a, a PSA message for everyone out here. Okay. Public service announcement. Everybody take, take a vacation, take a little break. I know sometimes we as artists, you know, we're always hungry to improve and to grow and we're always in that grind mindset. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to, to take a break, to wind down, you know, maybe from school, from work, from art, even shoot. All right. But, um, I would say this right here is the, uh, kind of the rough, rough mannequin that we have, right? Um, the neck, I'm not actually going to change too much. Cause I think we've already, I think we've drawn out a pretty good neck from our first mannequin structure. And then from here, we're going to go now over and talk about how to actually apply the clothing on top of all this. Right. Um, and thank you for all the follows today. Uh, matcha five, 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 and also AV, uh, Calon. Appreciate that guys. I don't know what's going on today, but <laughs> I appreciate all the follows out here. And, uh, yeah, we'll get into a Q and a session in a bit. Um, I just want to start locking out some of these details. So if you guys, um, if you guys do have any questions, I mean, you can type them now, but I might not answer them until a little bit later, but it's good to type them now. So that way I can kind of see what type of questions you guys might have. Um, if you have any questions. Okay. All right. So there you go. We've got here the general mannequin, general forms. Let me go ahead and kind of shift a few things around as well. Um, and then I think we'll be, we'll be good to go to start applying some clothing on here. Um, let me actually also make it bigger too. So let's really just kind of full size everything here. Uh, let me kind of liquefy a few things out here. I think this is a great pose. I think the character, um, Van Helsing here is in a very kind of heroic stance. He's got his weapon, um, that he's holding there, which is pretty nice. Uh, let me kind of lower the biceps a little bit as well. There you go. Um, let me kind of cut, cut this one out a bit more. So it's a pretty solid pose. Um, I honestly think it's a, a pretty common pose that you would use in a lot of like heroic scenes, right? Uh, like a stream on April fool's day. How's it going? Yeah. Today is April 1st. Yes. For, for those of you watching live, it is April 1st, but don't worry. It's not like I got anything sus planned, you know, <laughs> it's not like I got any, I got any pranks for you guys. Not, not, not yet at least, but okay guys. So, um, we've got in here now the, the mannequin structure that we have. Let's actually go in here now and let's start actually applying some of the clothing on top, right? So again, we have here, um, we have here a bunch of different types of fabric on this, on this character. And so we'll talk about how those fabrics kind of interact here with the, with the character and we'll start laying those things out. Now, personally, whenever I draw um, clothing on a character, I like to kind of build up here the structure 
of the folds and stuff on top, right? So here on the neck, keep in mind here that the neck is cylindrical. And so the fabric here is going to also wrap around cylindrical. Um, and then depending on the type of fabric here, you might have, for example, this fabric. Notice how this one right here is going to kind of uh, wrap around a little bit around the neck because I think the fabric is actually kind of situating itself. Um, situating itself here on top of the the other form that it's on so it's kind of like a it's like folding on top of itself right so understanding how these things work can become really helpful um, and then being able to for example round out those curves so here i'm giving a little bit of space uh right here around the neck right so this kind of space right here can help you understand how thick the fabric is but also you can even add a little bit of a line right here kind of like to go past the form there to also show just how thick or how thin um, a particular fabric is so these are kind of like small techniques that you can do notice how i'm not going all the way around here i'm not going like this to draw the fabric because you don't have to um, sometimes you can just kind of denote the the line there and denote the structure by going in here like so and just adding a little bit there to showcase how thick the fabric is so this is again i want to remind you guys that fabric is not just a thin line right like there's different types of material that are have that will have different types of thicknesses and so you want to make sure to keep that in mind as you start building up um, your character design now we'll take a look at the next section right here which is going to be that um his kind of like interior top there and that one looks like it's going to be some form of leather. And so that, again, will have its own uh, set of thicknesses, right? So we'll go in here like so, and we'll start piecing things out. Uh, and for those of you asking, yes, I'm currently working on a new layer uh, right now. Also, thank you for the follow, Elib Fox, and also uh, Chris ZG. If you guys are new here, welcome in. My name is Kasem, and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design. And I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Um, so if you guys are interested in some uh, free art education, you guys like animation anime all of that stuff or you just like to hang out on a stream uh, on a on a weekend or any day really um feel free to follow join in and i hope you guys enjoy today's uh today's stream now i'm going to go in here uh going back here to the clothing now i'm going to go in and start kind of uh piecing out here now this kind of a uh, collared section that he has and Again, I think the main thing that I want to talk about with you guys for, for this one is going to be mostly right now about understanding the different thicknesses of fabric. So an easy thing you can do to really add some depth to uh, your clothing as well, too, is sometimes you can add a little bit of a line here to kind of showcase how thick something is. So like, for example, with this leather, maybe you'll add a little bit of a, a doubled up line there, right? To kind of showcase uh, some of that fabric thickening there. And then maybe we'll do that as well right here. So little, little like small things like these small details can help kind of establish some of that structure that we're looking for. Now, other things you can do as well too is, and we haven't done this one yet, but you can also start incorporating stuff like different types of uh, shape designs on here too. So maybe what I'll do is I'll actually, maybe I'll change the design. So I'll have it go this way. And from there, Oh, that way it looks a little bit more like this and then we'll kind of open it up so that way the the details kind of fan out that way right um let's see here uh, i don't know if it's obvious or not but how do animators and studios handle the various types of fabrics like how do they make it obvious if something is cotton or leather or whatever it's going to be these right here right because these type of things right here no, like knowing the thickness of fabric and the type of folds that the fabric makes again is going to be the key sauce for being able to understand the type of fabric you're working with so obviously color and stuff will also help too so applying the color will obviously make this a little bit more understandable that it's leather but for example here because of uh, leather the way that leather works it has its own kind of texture and thickness and because of that it can it can do these type of crazy folds like so 
Whereas if this was a cotton shirt, notice how this would probably, the gravity would probably go down like so. Um, you'd probably see some of the forms overlapping here, and then you would see more of the folds here, right? So for example, if this was a t-shirt, the, the, the type of clothing and the folds that you would see would be very different. Also, the thickness of the fabric, right? So again, showing these type of uh, thicknesses right here um, in the lines that we're using, this is going to be a lot thicker of a fabric than what we would be using if we if this was a cotton shirt so understanding those little subtle details of understanding the thickness understanding the type of folds that are being created will actually help um just from the lines alone be able to convey that we're dealing with a particular type of fabric and not something else um hopefully that makes sense did, did that did that make sense in the chat let me know <laughs> Um, we're going to go in here now. We're going to add in a few other details on this side and let's kind of go in and start piecing some of these things out. And you'll kind of see here how I'm just kind of, you know, adding in, I'm building up on top of other forms as well. So another great tip that I would give for those of you who are working on clothing is to build up from, you know, the inside out. So again, think about what's going on underneath the clothing and then start piecing those things up as well. Because oftentimes I've seen, you know, I've seen artists who just, again, jump in right into the details, which can be fine. And I know there's a lot of professionals who do work and jump into the details. But if you are still a beginner and you're still trying to understand how the structure and the, you know, components of clothing work, I would really encourage you guys to start thinking about building it up um, piece by piece, as if you were putting on clothing, you know, on yourself, right? You're going to be putting on a, that, that turtleneck, and then you're going to be putting on the jacket, and then you're going to be putting on the actual, uh, like trench coat. So, um, and thanks for the follows as well. Also, how's it going? Kaiza and everybody else is here. Um, are you erasing the body outline or just coloring over it with white? Um, I'm coloring over it with white. So that way I can keep the underlying, uh, keep the underlying mannequin there. That way I can just show it to you guys as a layer, right? But already here, um, we've already got some interesting structures. Now, for those of you who want a little bit more of an advanced technique, um, there are a few things you can do as well. Like you can include some ambient occlusion right here. So for example, in these corners, if you want to create some depth in your illustration, adding in some ambient occlusion can work out really well. Um, but there's also a few other techniques you can do too. So let's say, um, let's say this, this fabric has some texture. You can also go in here and add some texture and you can use some of these textural lines to also convey maybe some of the folding that's going on here, um, on this, you know, on this character, right? So we're here, we're adding some contours and then maybe here on the contour, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a dip fold right here that we can add a shadow on later. Right. But you can definitely go in like this as well and just start adding in, you know, some small details. But I usually don't do any of this stuff until after, right? Until after we've laid out everything. And then we can kind of go in and say, okay, cool. Let me add some more detail here, this and that. But there are things you can do um, to already give more, more kind of an understanding of the form, um, you know, stuff like that. So that's what I'll say there. Um, but let me kind of go ahead and shape this one out a little bit more there. And then maybe let's kind of go in here and give, I'll, I'll put a little bit of a shadow underneath here just to give an understanding that this form is going to be on top of, um, the jacket denim, whatever structure we have there. Um, let's see. Are you also going to cover how to make up clothing or just from references? Well, here's the thing, right? All of these things, guys, that I'm telling you guys, these are going to be, you can use these from imagination as well. So we're using reference right now. But again, if I took out the reference, we can still do this one without the reference. Like I can, here, I'll show you guys. Okay, here, we'll do without reference. And the reason why is because again, all I'm doing is I'm laying fabric on top. So as long as you understand what is going on um, underneath, you can apply the fabric here. So for example, here, we're going to be placing this jacket now that we have all the rest of the structure, right? I'm going to go in here like this. Let's kind of put in uh, maybe the, the collar here like so. And then maybe there's going to be like a second section that kind of overlaps right here like this. So you'll see here, all I'm really doing is I'm thinking about the overall uh, thickness of the fabric, but also the other thing too, that I want to talk about is shape design and simplification. Now, um, we're going to talk about, uh, simplification, 
um, in a bit. We're gonna talk, we'll talk about that in a bit. But for now, I want to just kind of lay out some of the general details. Now, again, um, following here a few of the techniques that I want to mention, stuff like, for example, how thick is the fabric? Um, when you start thinking about that as well, um, you also want to start thinking about how you can then apply uh, other things here like gravity. So gravity is something that, you know, you have to think about when you're drawing your characters because clothing is going to be oftentimes adhering to some form of gravity. So here uh, we're going to kind of bring this jacket down and, and this jacket is going to go all the way down like so, right? Bring it all the way down here and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now before we talk about the different types of folding uh, that you'll definitely be seeing here in this jacket. I want to go over here with you guys the seven types of clothing folds that you'll commonly see in your uh, in in fabric. Now, again, if you guys want to grab this sheet, this one's available on my Discord channel. So go ahead and grab this one right there. Uh, Discord can't type it. There you go. Type this one right here. It's on the Discord channel, and I'll talk about these really quickly. So. Again, these are just generalizations. These these were created by uh, George Bridgman, though maybe not created by him. But this is what he taught. So basically, what George Bridgman says is that there are seven types of clothing folds. The first one is going to be a drop fold, and that's kind of like if you hold, like let's say, a napkin or a tissue or a cloth, um, and those folds are going to kind of drop down from a centralized point, and they're all going to go converge into this one tension point right here. Okay, so this is known as a drop fold. Um, We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later as we'll see some examples of that. Um, another type of common fold is actually known as the pipe fold. Now, pipe folds are kind of interesting because they basically are generated, like let's say if you have um, like something going across a form, like a curtain, for example, or if you have fabric going across the shoulders of a character, um, what will end up happening is that the ends of these will actually create these tube-like structures. So think of it like a curtain. Um, if you're wearing a skirt, for example, the bottom of those skirts will actually start to create this kind of wavelength pattern that starts to tube and wrap, and wrap around the forms um, vertically like this. So let me... Let me do this on a new layer just to make sure. Um, kind of like this, right? You'll see it kind of go this way. It goes back inwards like that. And you can actually think of these as almost like tube-like structures, okay? And again, for those of you who are asking about drawing clothing from imagination, imagination, guys, I want to clarify here. Imagination is really just about understanding your being able to utilize your visual library and your understanding of a particular subject and then being able to reconstruct that. Right. I want to just emphasize this because when I was a when I was a beginner, I thought drawing from imagination was something where like you close your eyes and you can visualize a picture and then you can retrace that picture right? It's like draw anything that you see in your head. But more often than not, being able to actually draw from imagination is more about understanding the structures and the foundation that goes into building a structure. And so for those of you who want to draw clothing from imagination, these are the type of things you want to understand, right? Understand how fabric works. And then when you go and study a reference, try to pick those things out and see what you're seeing such that when you then go back into drawing your own characters, you'll have a better understanding and a better approach for being able to tackle those things. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is why I wanted to mention earlier about the idea of like, like, can you teach us how to draw from imagination? It's the same thing. There's no such thing as drawing necessarily from imagination uh, without drawing and understanding and studying from, from life, in this case, from references. Um, but there you go. That's that's just what I wanted to say about that. Um, but the next type of fold here is going to be the diaper folds. These are going to be folds here that are created by holding up two tension points um, there. So you can think of this. They call it a diaper because you can imagine like if you were wearing like a diaper and you're pinched at two sides of the hip, um, it'll create kind of this uh, kind of a U shape form right here across those two tension points. And as you move further and further away, uh, from those tension points, these will actually go further out. Now, a more common use case or a common case you'll see this is actually um, going to be in wearing t-shirts. And so take a look at this. Yeah. So a cape is a cape is a more like a, a detail, but like everyday clothing. Um, if you're wearing, for example, a t-shirt, your shoulders actually sometimes can act as um, can act as two tension points right here. And that's why sometimes you'll see like this, look at this diagonal shape right here. Um, you can kind of see how it kind of, oh, there you go. If I, if I raise my shoulders, look at that. You see that it creates a U shape right here. Um, 
on the fabric. So that's kind of a, a common everyday use case that you'll see this diaper fold is actually in the t-shirt uh, using the shoulders there for tension. Now, the other type of fold here, which we'll actually do a demo for, is, uh, is called a spiral fold. And this is when you rotate a fabric, kind of twisting a fabric. And sometimes you'll see this pretty commonly when you're actually just looking at a hand. Like, let's say you have your arm and you twist, like you rotate your wrist or something. That'll sometimes also rotate and twist the fabric. And what'll happen there is, again, this fabric will go over the forms, but it'll actually wrap around the form there. Um, now, the last two that I'll talk about there is called a half lock fold and a zigzag fold. Now, the half lock fold is something that you'll see basically oftentimes in fabric here around the elbow, around the knees, where the fabric will go on top of each other because of some bending or some, some squishing going on there. So this is pretty common if you, for example, have your arm bent like this. The fabric will kind of sit on top there. And depending on how thick the fabric is, you might see a lot of um, overlap or you might not see a lot at all, right? The last one here is going to be the zigzag fold. And these are, are, are common. Oftentimes, you'll see these in, um, in like t-shirt sleeves, right? Where all the fabric kind of just compresses on each other and creates kind of this zigzag pattern. So the difference between the two here is that this one right here is where the fabric really overlaps underneath another fabric, whereas this one is more just like some wrinkles. You get what I'm saying? It's kind of creating these like zigzag wrinkle patterns, but sometimes you'll see them interchanging with each other. So it's always kind of like, you know, take these with a grain of salt because these are just generalizations of different types of clothing folds and stuff, but they're not going to be the only type of folds you might be seeing. Maybe you'll see a mix and match of these things, right? So don't feel like you have to find these particular ones. Um, you, I think it's more about, um, I think it's more about being able to just have a general idea of what to look for. Uh, but there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, and hopefully I answered your question earlier too. Imagine, uh, imaginations. That was a great question. Um, about uh, about drawing from imagination, but I think I wanted to clarify that imagination is really just a derivation of of visual library and understanding from life. Um, if you're drawing on the iPad, um, I would say if you're drawing from the iPad, uh, Procreate's a pretty good app. Um, even Kim Jong Yi studied for years. Oh yeah, Kim Jong Yi is a great example of an artist that um, a great example of an artist who studies a lot from life and then tries to reproduce the things that they're studying from life, um, you know, and apply that into their own, uh, apply that into, into their own drawing and stuff. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here. Um, oh yeah. Studied. Thank you. Um, yeah, they studied from life. Yes. <laughs> Past tense, unfortunately. Um, but here's another example here of an area where you can actually showcase some thickness. So right here, I'm going to put some overlap here for where the where maybe this jacket's going to kind of wrap down. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of a space there just to kind of showcase like, hey, you know what? There's a bit of thickness there in that transition. You don't have to show every single line that you're drawing, uh, which is a, a big part of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, but then here, let's actually go into talking about maybe the shoulder pad area um, that we have here. So what I like to talk about here is now going to be this idea of shape design. Now, interestingly enough, shape design can actually play a really big role in one, making your clothing more aesthetic, but also two, in simplifying clothing as well, too. So here I'm going to be showcasing maybe the padding of this character. And let me actually, you know what, I'll bring the reference back here so that way you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, but here's this, here's how he has, like, for example, this kind of fabric that situates itself on top of the shoulder and then it wraps around the arm right here, right? But what we're going to do is I'm going to take this idea and we're actually going to break it down into large shape right here, medium shape right here, and then small shape right here. So leveraging small, medium, large in our shape design, um, one, can make it easier to, to draw it, but also in many ways it can actually make it more visibly appealing than if we were to use a reference, right? So let's go in here now. I'm going to kind of group up these large, medium, small shapes. And I'm going to start off with a nice, simple shape first. And then we're going to kind of build up 
the the details on top of all this so here's that large shape that we have it's wrapping around the shoulder and the arms and stuff and notice how i'm gonna even though the reference right here is a soft transition we can again use stylization to kind of help showcase particular features that maybe don't exist in the reference so here i'm going to add a little bit more of a bump right here because I still want to be able to showcase the shoulder or where the shoulder will be. Now, again, this is a, this is a more of a stylistic choice because of stuff that we do in the animation industry. Uh, these are going to be called landmarks or um, I forgot the, the proper term. There's probably a bunch of different terms for them. Um, but the way that I, I think of them, they're kind of like eye tracking. Right. So in animation, you can imagine that you're going to see characters moving really fast or they're going to be jumping around or maybe you'll only see the silhouette of a character. And so adding in certain landmarks that'll help showcase the features can actually be really, really beneficial in animation. So in this case right here, I'm going to be saying, you know what, this section right there, that is going to be um, that's going to be the section there of the shoulder. Right. Next from here, I'm going to go down now and let's find that middle section. And this one right here, I want to kind of wrap that down here and uh, maybe we'll do it like that. So maybe like right here, I'm, I'm not really using the reference as much now, but uh, I'm just going to say we're going to bring it down like so. Okay. There you go. And then let's go in here. And then last but not least, we'll put in that small shape, right? So small, medium, large uh, shape designs, again, can can play a nice, easy way, a nice big role in kind of creating some nice aesthetics uh, for your characters. So again, I'm going to use that overlapping technique, but notice here how I'm not going to actually connect all the lines. Uh, just to showcase to you guys that you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, this is something that we do at powerhouse all the time where, you know, we want to save up as many lines as we use, because if you use too many lines and too many things that overlap each other, it can actually flatten the image out. Uh, but also uh, uh, this was a great message that I learned from Tom Fox, which was sometimes less is more. And the reason why sometimes less is more is because the human eye and the human brain is actually really smart in that sometimes when it doesn't see something, it can actually fill in the blanks to make it look you know, better than maybe what you would have drawn if you actually added in all the lines. And in some ways, I think this is actually partially the reason why um, sketches can sometimes be and look better than the final product, right? Because when someone sees a sketch, you kind of see the potential of where it can be with the color, the composition, the line art, the details and so forth. Um, and so sometimes less is more. And, and not to say that you should only be drawing sketches, but this is a technique that you can definitely apply when you are working on different types of fabric. So for example, right here with clothing, I'm going to go in here and kind of add in, you know, a little bit here, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to close everything out. I'm just going to keep it nice and relatively loose. Now let me maybe bit, make it a bit thicker. Uh, so like I'll go like this. So that way we add some depth here again, right? So we're going to add some depth here. Maybe I'll add a little bit of a shadow right here. Um, that's the ambient occlusion that we talked about earlier. And then I'll do it on this side as well, too. And I'm also going to be exaggerating certain shapes as well, too, right? So we have the reference here just to kind of for me to show you guys the different components that I'm working on. Um, but I'm showing you guys that if you take a look at what I'm doing versus what's in the reference, you'll actually see that I'm going to stylize a lot here because again, uh, as somebody who works in the animation industry, you have to find ways to make that silhouette stand out and make the shape design look and feel a little bit more clear than what might exist in a reference. Now, if you're working in live action or you're working in games or whatever, that might not be necessary. But if you are working in animation, finding ways to kind of push the forms and make it more readable, like, hey, this is going to be the portion of the forearm section right here, or this is going to be the portion of the, um, you know, the arms or whatever, that's going to be really helpful. So. Um, hey, welcome back in. Um, everyone's coming in here. Also, thank you for the follow. Uh, uh, Fee, Fee Kulix, uh, Defender of the Sky, uh, Jay, JK, and everyone else coming in here. 
I run into that often. Usually I prefer my sketch to my line art. Yeah, it happens. You know, <laughs> sometimes it's just nice to look at a sketch and you're like, wow, wow, man, this, this is going to look great. And then you work on it and you're like, oh, wait a minute. What did I do? <laughs> why does my sketch not look good and there's a lot of reasons why too like sometimes it's also just maybe you don't have as much skill in developing um in developing an interesting kind of sketch or line art that maybe the sketch is really good at doing um now really quick guys i i know we ran an ad earlier but we're gonna be running an ad right now just because the ad break is a little funky um but we are gonna be running an ad in about a minute so if you do get an ad thank you again for sticking around for the ad break um if you don't want to see any ads consider subscribing or using a prime sub but thank you again these ads do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do uh what i'm doing out here on twitch but i hope to see you guys after the ad break if you do get one um hopefully it'll reset after this because i changed the settings but i think this one was already locked in this one was already locked in from before i changed the settings so it's a little it's a little wonky today uh but yeah don't worry in the meantime i'm just going to be adding in here some clothing fabric and you know what i'm going to do i'm going to add in some bunching like this just to kind of add in some of the again interesting shape design that you don't necessarily see um in in the reference but we're going to be adding some of that here to kind of you know make it a little bit more interesting um but yeah uh thank you for the uh, for the follow as well too um high life seven 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 okay so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna speak too much here during the ad break or i'm not gonna reveal too many secrets so now that i have my general shapes i'm gonna actually go in here and this is where I'm going to start actually adding in some of the forms and details, right? You can kind of start seeing here, like, okay, now that we have all this, like, okay, here we go. We can kind of go in here. Uh, maybe we'll make like this section of the clothing, kind of that, that center uh, section there. So let me maybe kind of go down this way, create a bit of a shape there, right? We're going to go in here. Uh, and this is where I'm starting to break up those forms now, kind of like how we draw hair too. So we've done a few hair tutorials on my stream, but you'll see here the approach is actually very similar, right? The approach here is going to be start off with the basic shapes. And then from those basic shapes, what do we do? We, we take those basic shapes and then we start breaking those down into slightly more detailed shapes. And you'll actually see here that something that I'm doing pretty often, um, especially with something like uh, the reference that we have here is I'm actually simplifying it a lot because again, if you're working in animation, it's going to be such a pain to draw every single detail of the clothing um, that you're seeing. And so oftentimes it's much more important to kind of capture the, the very necessary details that help establish the look of the character. Uh, in this case right here, just looking at the basic structure of the forms and the fabrics that we're seeing. Uh, but yeah, maybe we'll go in here and maybe we'll add like another kind of pinching fabric fold like so, you know, just to kind of add a little bit of depth there. Like maybe the fabric is kind of rolling in itself uh, like so. And then uh, maybe there's like some stitching going on here, actually. So maybe let's do that instead. Oh, thanks for quenching my thirst. Appreciate that. All right, are you guys back from the ad break? Let me know in the chat. I hope that after this, I think it should be reset now. After this one, uh, the ad break should be fixed. So hopefully it's okay. You guys are back. Okay, thank you again, guys. I know there's we ran a we ran a fair number of ads right now during my stream. Uh, it's 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 a little funky with the new month and how things have been changing with the ad breaks. Um, but all right. Um, so for those of you who are back here, welcome back in. So right now, all I'm really doing again, guys, I'm taking those basic shapes that we have and I'm just going in now and I'm just adding in, I'm adding in a little bit more detail. So this is where you can start to go in now and be like, okay, cool. So we have here our structure. Let me start adding in some folds, right? And folds, you know, especially for these type of areas right here where maybe there's, uh, you know, the, there's not as much like pinching or folding going on here. The folds can be purely aesthetic. So right now I'm adding in just some small, medium, large shapes, but I'm keeping it still very simple, right? If you want to go more detail and you want to add more folds, you totally could. But 
I, I always think like focus on the main core kind of shapes here that we're seeing. So in this case right here, we're going to be adding in, you know, kind of those folds. And then maybe we'll kind of add in a few lines like here to kind of add some contours for the fabric, right? Stuff like this. Maybe like that. Um, so you'll kind of see how we're slowly building up here um, on this structure, right? By just working our way into adding in subtle details over time. But we're not, again, I'm not trying to overcomplicate it right away because that is a mistake that I used to make all the time uh, when I was first drawing, when I was still a beginner, I would always go in and I'd be like, all right, let me add all the details right away. And and then you draw all those details in and then you, you take a step back and you're like, yeesh, what the heck happened? <laughs> what happened to my drawing? Why does it look so, it, it, there's a lot of detail, but it doesn't look good. You get what I'm saying? Um, how about Mrs. Starbuck? Will he be coloring this as well? Probably not. So today's stream will be focused primarily on clothing today. Um, so I'm just showing you guys how to apply some of the clothing, though we might do some shading. So if I do have some time, uh, we might apply some shading to this. And I think that might be uh, valuable to cover. Now here, here's another example of things that we can do, right? So if you want to really add more detail, like let's say you're doing more of an illustrative style or more of a rendered style, you can definitely add more like folds right here. So like maybe some, some folds like this, right? Maybe you go like that. Maybe you kind of break that up a little bit. Uh, maybe you just add in a few kind of pinching fabrics that are going to be going across here on the folds. But again, these are, um, these are things that I think about later. So these are details I would definitely bring into the scene afterwards as additional texture to the fabric, which actually, let's write that down as a, as a topic. I totally forgot about this texture. Um, you can utilize texture here um, and texture can be created in many ways. Uh, the way that you use your lines, the way that you denote your fabric and your folds. So many different aspects here that we're going to cover. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, um, but let's go down here now. So let's work on this. Uh, maybe we'll come back to the sleeve in a bit because we've already added in a few, I think a few fair details on here. But yeah, how is this so far? Uh, for those of you who are watching right now, I know we've, we've been kind of slowly building up this character design here. Um, but how is this so far when it comes to clothing? Is this making sense right now? Let me know in the chat and um, I'm going to try to highlight a few kind of components here for you guys. So let me see if I can kind of find um, some interesting type of folds. So I would actually, this type of fold right here that I am that I just drew out, let me do this on a new layer. Um, I would actually consider this one uh, in some ways kind of being like a half lock type of fold. So you're seeing here how the fabric kind of goes. Um, so here's, for example, uh, let's do it like this. So you can imagine here you have that cylinder, right? Okay, here's our little cylinder. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm basically from that cylinder, I'm just going in here and I'm applying the fabric on top like so but I'm also considering how the fabric is going to be uh, wrapping around the form. So in this case right here, I think the fabric is going to be going downwards because, well, actually it should be going in, in the way that we've drawn the cylinder. Okay. We should change the cylinder. Then the cylinder should be going, this bottom plane should not be showing. And instead you should have the top plane like this. So depending on the orientation of the arm and stuff, you'll also want to consider the orientation of the folds that you're working with, right? So here, I'm going this way like so, right? So we're adding in those fabric and the folds, but we're doing it on top of that cylinder mass. Um, and we're following there the shape of the form underneath. So that's, that's going to be kind of the, the tip there is like follow, uh, follow the shapes. Okay. 
me do this multiply real quick. And I'll color this so you guys can see it better. There. Um, but let's kind of uh, work back here now on... Again, I'm not going to work on the rest of the the torso there. So let me kind of jump back in here on the structure of this jacket. Now, what's the name of the font you were writing in? <laughs> All caps. Kasem caps. I don't know. Um, so now we're going to talk about the other fold here. So we had here this half lock fold. Um, next, what we're going to talk about is going to be the pipe fold. Now, as you guys remember, the pipe fold is basically a fold that's created when you have um, kind of like a drapery that goes all the way down here. Um, and then that drapery is going to kind of uh, eventually start to kind of round out this way as the fabric starts to compress on itself. Now, in this case right here, we're only going to be drawing out the upper portion, maybe. Or actually, should we draw the whole thing? What do you guys think? Hmm, maybe we should. Um, so the fabric here is basically being created as kind of dropping all the way down. And something to keep in mind, again, is that as you get further down here, you're going to start to see some of the cylindrical kind of wrapping out here, the forms. Um, here, you'll see kind of that already happening uh, right here on the jacket, right? Um, the rest of this is going to be a little compressed and it's kind of hard to see what's going on there exactly with the clothing But let's just assume that everything is going to kind of drop down uh, with all the with all the folds there Is it hot there? I only see your dog on the floor. No, he's he's like that all seasons. It's It's 45 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> it's, it's not it's not hot at all um, He just he just enjoys laying um, so we're going to go in here, right? So we're going to kind of add in um, these kind of tube-like structures, bringing that down. Maybe we'll add in here a bit of a fold as it kind of fans out because right now the arm is kind of adding a little bit of that compression um, into the fabric. So maybe we'll kind of, you know, consider that there. But then we're also going to go in and let's actually start adding in maybe a little bit of a taper too. So... We'll go in like this. So we're kind of tapering that fabric out there uh, and then as we kind of bring it all the way down here bring it down across right we're gonna have here maybe some more compression so this is kind of where you can start thinking about how maybe the fabric will start to compress underneath here hard to say because I can't really see with the reference so we're gonna kind of just make it up ourselves here but you can kind of see some of that compression there the fabric maybe there's gonna be a pocket sleeve right here that we can kind of uh, use to break up the forms right and then here we'll add maybe a bit of thickness here just to make sure we have we know that this portion um, of the sleeve is going to be separate here from the the actual jacket there does he shed a lot oh yeah he sheds a lot um that's just a natural a natural tra uh, trait of double coated dogs akitas huskies also shed a lot But he, he sheds like in bulk, if that makes any sense. He, he will shed like all of a sudden. It's not like over time he sheds. It's just like for like a week or like sometimes even longer, like two weeks, he'll just shed chunks, like huge, huge chunks of fur, like a yak. It's pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to actually cut it off like right here because again, um I want to I want us not to focus too much on all the other details today, but actually hold on. I also don't want us to even focus on uh Okay. I'm going to cut it off here because I don't want us to work on the legs today. Let's see. I'll cut it off later, but I wanted to show you guys again just kind of how to visualize these forms. Um and so you can kind of see here how we're bringing it down, right? So here uh, in this case, I'll do another example here, another demo. Um, as the fabric kind of goes all the way down and stuff, or maybe I'll do it on the other side, but basically as the fabric goes down, you'll see how it kind of wraps around like this and creates kind of that uh, curtain shape, right? 
So we're looking for these things and why they occur. So that's really the more important thing here that I'm trying to teach you guys is like understanding the fabric you're working with and understanding when, when and where do we see these type of folds. In this case, we're going to be seeing this pipe fold because it's a long drapery that goes all the way down and think of, you can think of it like a curtain um, that you might have at home or something. Okay, um, but to finish out this arm right here, I'm just going to add here another type of fold. So this type of fold here, again, so a, a good majority of the folds you're going to see are probably going to be variations of half lock folds and stuff um, or zigzag folds or whatever have you. So whenever you have something compressing like right here, right, you're going to have like a like a band or something kind of compressing the. Uh, the arm, right? You can kind of add a fold there to showcase that fabric compressing on itself. So in this case, we're going to do a little bit of that right there. And there you go. Not bad. And let me kind of add in a little bit more details here. And then I think we'll be good to move on to the other side there. Um, Let's see here. Uh, thank you for the follow to Spectre Cade, High Life 777, uh, and everybody else who's coming in here today, guys. Hopefully, you guys are uh, enjoying today's stream. Again, clothing, I think, is a very interesting topic, one that I feel like a lot of people have mentioned uh, struggling with and stuff. But I think uh, one of the best ways, I think, to really get better at drawing clothing is just to kind of understand. Oh, Am I drawing the wrong layer? Shoot, I am. Um, it's just to understand why the clothing does what it does. Let me merge. Merge that and erase. Erase that. There you go. Nice. Um, hey, how's it going, Nurse Leslie? We've been watching for about 20 minutes now. Nice. Yeah. Um, I, I hope it's been valuable so far. So for those of you who are uh, joining in, um, I do recommend you grab the sheets out here that are available on my Discord channel. Those are going to be ones that you can follow along with for today's stream. If you want to use the references that I'm using, um, part of the reason why I'm using this uh, Val Hel Van Helsing reference is mostly because I feel like it. he has a bunch of different types of textures and fabrics um, that are kind of going across his body here. And I think that's a great example of showcasing how to draw some of the, the fabric there. So you can kind of see how that's already coming together. Pretty nice, I would say. Yeah, we're covering how to do clothing today. Um, but also welcome in, uh, uh, Muniri. Good evening, though. Technically, it's still very early for me. <laughs> um... Insulated jackets. Yes. Um, so we're going to do again that same technique here that I talked about, right? So here when we're adding in that collar for the uh, for the sleeve right here, you don't have to do, you don't have to go in and draw all the lines that touch across. You can, um, but personally, I think it's, it's actually kind of nicer, especially if it has, again, a thick, if it's a thick fabric, right? Um, sometimes leaving in a little bit of that gap right there can actually help out a lot in showcasing just how thick something something is, right? Yeah, thick. T H I T H I C C. <laughs> uh let me actually lower it a little bit more. Um and then that way we can get a much more kind of interesting shape there. I think this one is a little too thin for my preference. Um, here we might have another kind of fold here because of the pinching of the fabric, right? So the fabric again is pinching, uh, pinching that sleeve. So maybe we'll add a little bit of a line there. Um, but again, maybe we'll just kind of erase a little bit of it because we always want to think about how to showcase the overall look without having to break the form too much and break what the, what the viewer sees. Okay, nice. Um, let's add some ambient occlusion, put that in right here. And then now let's start working on maybe adding in the other half now of the clothing. 
So we'll work on adding in the shirt, but before we add in the shirt, let's add in here the belt because I think the belt is going to be kind of an important aspect of what creates that compression around the waist section there. <laughs> now nah, you're good, Shadow. Uh, thanks for the follow to you, Gammon, Gammon546. Uh, for those of you who've been following today, welcome in. Um, I'm curious how you guys came across my stream today. Was it from the was it from the art category on Twitch? Was it from recommended? Was it from my Instagram or YouTube channel? Was it from I don't know, someone out here in the community talking about my streams and they were like, hey, you should check out KSM. I don't know. Let me know in the chat how you guys came across my channel today. Um, if you guys are new here and stuff. Wait, what happened to the... Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, so we have that red line there. Let me merge all this, actually. So follow the forms. Um... And then we also have another thing that I want to call out too. Uh, small, medium, large shape. So we have here large, medium, small. And let me actually highlight that in a different color so you guys can kind of see it. There you go. And you'll actually see how um, I'll actually I'll highlight this across multiple areas here. Um, but small, medium, large is such a busted technique that I feel like um, I didn't really learn about this until much later in my career. Like when I was uh, when I was a beginner, I wasn't really thinking about small, medium, large. But once you like start seeing it in a lot of different designs, you'll actually see how prevalent small, medium, large is in a lot of the things um, that we have, right? So large, medium, small. Um, and then I'll highlight that right here as well too. So you'll actually see that again, um, this motif actually works pretty consistently across the board. So here it again is another large form, right? And you'll see variations of this across the design here that I'm doing, some of which is unintentional, some of which is intentional. Um, but here we'll have, uh, let me clean this one up. So we'll have here a large shape, right? And then in between that large shape, what do we have? We have a small shape right here, kind of that rectangular form right here. That's busted. See? And then you have here that medium shape here of the cuff, right? So small, medium, large, you can use this across the board, um, for different areas there. So there you go. Small, medium, large. Uh, for denoting some of that structure. Uh, thank you for the for the follow too, Coco. Uh, small, small, medium, large, large, medium, small. Yeah. Um, I've been watching a lot of our streams because I draw in the morning to start my day. Oh, nice! It's super awesome. Uh, cat and cat. Yeah. Let me know if that made any sense, guys, or if that didn't make sense. Um, but yes, you can also use that too. Um, the, you can also use that too for triangular shapes, though we're not there yet. Um, though you can actually see here that we're at, we are technically using a, um, the motif that we're using today is going to be more of a square like motif. So you'll actually see that a lot of the, um, shape designs here that I'm going for are going to be utilizing kind of like a boxy, uh, shape design there. So shape design. And you'll actually see that across, uh, across the rest of the illustration that we have here. Okay, cool. Um, but let's go in now and let's, let me finish this one off here. Oh, am I in the wrong layer? Oh, I always do that. Go back, go back. Okay, here we go.
Um, I always wonder if there was a better way to get the folds right on the clothes and I would always make random lines so it didn't look right. Yeah, so I think um, that's a common thing that I think a lot of beginners struggle with, right? Like how many of you guys in the chat have ever felt the same way as Tropic Hannah, right? You were like, man, I'm trying to draw these clothing and you're adding in all the details and you're like, why does it look off? I'm copying the reference, right? I'm doing everything exactly right with the reference that I'm seeing. I'm adding in all these little wrinkles and all these little details right here. But why does it, my drawing not look good, right? Put an F in the chat if you've ever felt that way where you were like, man, it just feels like you're adding in random lines and it doesn't actually add to the drawing. So this is why I'm always trying to tell you guys, like you want to be intentional about what you're adding in because you'll, you'll sometimes find that the more intentional you become, the more clear the drawing also becomes as well, right? And this, this applies whether you're trying to do game design, film, uh, or especially if you're doing animation. All right, but let me kind of go in here and let me just kind of add a few. Oh, he has a scarf. Okay, well, we, we don't need to add that, right? We don't need to add a scarf. Um, so let's go in and kind of talk about now the clothing here and so keep in mind here that what's going on for the most part is that the fabric is actually going to be stretched out sideways here um, across the form and so it's going to be kind of an interesting combination there of seeing a half lock fold that's kind of the folds kind of uh, compress on each other but also seeing um, in some ways a little bit of the diaper fold as you're going to start seeing some of that tension uh, going in here across the fabric right so let me actually get rid of uh, the anatomy underneath like so and then let me also line up the remainder of the jacket there uh, like right about here I would say this should actually be longer but uh, let me go ahead and just do that maybe like right here Okay. Um, so what we're going to be seeing here in this middle section basically is going to be, again, the fabric going this way now because it's being pulled on, um, it's being pulled on the edges of the torso, but it's also being pulled in the middle here because there are going to be, for example, these bindings that are going to kind of keep the fabric together, right? So we're going to utilize these bindings because these bindings are actually going to be, uh, how some of these folds are going to be created. So Understanding what the fabric is connecting to, understanding how thick the fabric is, all of those things can help you understand how to better um, draw your, your folds and stuff. So here we're going to kind of bring the fabric. Notice how I'm, I'm drawing some arrows right now, um, but you'll notice how we're going to kind of bring the fabric going in here like so. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of almost wrap them into um, these pinching here, the fabric and the clothing. So you'll kind of see how we're going to be utilizing a lot of that um, in this case. So let me actually do, 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 clean that one up there. Give it a little bit more length there. There you go. Um, let's see here. A lot of S in the chat. Um, there's also a question. Let me see. If I may ask, how okay, how would you know which folds to, in, to detail while animating and which ones to leave less detail if a character is moving? Oh, very great question. Um, the most important folds, I think, especially if you're talking about characters in animation, um, the folds that are going to be most important are either going to be folds along the joints, so the elbows, uh, stuff like the wrist, anywhere where you're seeing possible bending um, that adds to the mobility of the character, those are going to be the ones that you definitely want to add folds for. And then the rest of the folds are either going to be stuff for compression or just maybe added detail to emphasize the depth of something. But otherwise, I, I usually lean to adding in less folds than more. Um, because adding in more folds again is is not even going to be that visible oftentimes because if you're watching an animation each frame will only last a split second so the overall details don't actually matter too much instead what's more important um, is being able to convey the action and movement and being that uh, and making it easier to track whenever something is moving across a scene so adding in those kind of tension points along the joints will actually I think help out a lot. Um, it's a pretty common technique. If you ever study, um, here I'll show you guys. Watch this. 
This, this might be kind of cool to see. But if you ever study other artists' uh, designs and stuff, um, maybe here. Okay. So if you take a look at Legend of Korra, right? So here's a design from Mako that I did a character model sheet for. Watch this. Notice how there are going to be certain areas right here that'll help you denote some of the landmarks. Right here, for example, you'll, you'll see an arrow right here which denotes um, the elbow. Notice, or not the elbow, the shoulder, right? Notice how they added this boxy structure right here. Why do you think they did that? That's so that you know where the elbow is going to be. Notice how it pops off easily so you can kind of tell right away where the elbow is going to be because of the the structure look at the other section right here look at this the wrist oh the wrist is also boxy and also stands out why do you think that is because that's where the bending is going to be right so right here also why do you think they have this cuff link right here because that's where the knees are going to be so you'll actually see this oftentimes and even stuff like this why do you think those little bumps exist because that's where the ankles are, right? So you'll notice in animation, they do this all the time where they highlight certain areas which are going to be known as tracking points, um, tracking points for the designs, right? So you'll see this across all the designs of Legend of Korra. Um, if you take a look at all of that, notice how here, the sleeves right here, right? There's always a band around the waist to kind of create a d clear division between the upper torso and the lower body. Um, all of those things are all intentional design decisions, which indicate where certain landmarks are. So it's easier to animate those things and easier to see those things um, in animation. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. Also, thank you for the follows, HL Kenshi, and also Champion of the Raven. If you guys are new here, by the way, uh, welcome in. My name is Ksem. I teach art out here on Twitch, and I cover a bunch of different topics from anatomy, gesture, perspective, and I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Right now, I'm prepping to work as a designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So, if you guys are interested in some free art education, you guys like animation or anime or you guys just like i don't know hanging out here with my dog uh do leave a follow out here um today we we're talking about clothing folds which i think is a very difficult topic um but but i think once you kind of see and understand some of the components of it it makes it a little bit easier um overall um but now that i'm adding in here now that I'm adding in here these buckles for this uh, shirt that he's wearing, you'll start to see why these folds and stuff are even happening in the first place, right? So a lot of it is happening because the character is uh, wearing this fabric here that's really getting pulled off to the sides there. And each time that you have a buckle there, you're also creating a bit of a fold um, along the fabric, which is getting kind of compressed in. And because of that, along with the fabric actually... Um, along with the fabric actually being situated um, on the torso, you'll get kind of the folds that you're seeing here on this character, right? Um, folds are something you still have trouble with. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough. Folds are a pretty pretty difficult um, topic. I, I don't think I don't think it's an easy one for sure. So if anyone here is struggling with this, um, hopefully this this stream helps you. So um, here what I'm going to do is I'm just adding in some of those folds and I'm showing you guys where the arrows are, right? Because you'll see now when you look at the actual, let's, when you look at this reference here, all of a sudden these folds are starting to make a little bit more sense, right? Because they're occurring because of the, of that belt locking in there. But notice how the fabric also, see this? Notice how they're kind of coming in here, converging from here. And that also has to do with the fact that it's a diaper fold that is being, uh, that there's going to be tension right here from the shoulders and the sides of the torso wrapping around the form. So these are not just arbitrary lines, but lines that actually try to converge somewhere. So in our case, we might actually add maybe some of those lines going this way. Maybe we'll add some opposing lines. Um, but I'm also going to just kind of bring a lot of those lines back here and be able to visualize some of that going in there. And again, you don't have to add all the lines if you don't want to. I mean, if you do, you, you can, but I'm gonna try to keep it nice and simple, right? I'm gonna bring some of those lines here for the underlying folds, uh, like so. 
and then you can kind of pick and choose which ones you care about. Now, for for my purposes here, because we're trying to go for more of like an anime style, like if we were drawing out like a Van Helsing anime or whatever, which uh, would be kind of dope. I mean, they already have a, a Helsing anime, but if we had like a the old school uh, traditional take on Van Helsing, which I feel like Powerhouse could probably work on. Um, you know, this is kind of how I would think about it, right? You would think about some of the folds here that are being made, but you're not adding in too much folds that it ends up muddying the piece. Now, there are going to be some other fold techniques here that we're going to be seeing. So on the reference, you'll actually see some of these triangular shaped folds, right? And these are created from um, when you take fabric and you, again, compress them on each other like this, these are going to create these things called zigzag folds. And they're called zigzag folds because when the compression occurs, what ends up happening sometimes is you get kind of this, uh, this triangular pattern on the folds there, right? So you can add a few of those in as well if you really want to. Um, though I'm, I'm going to try to keep it nice and nice and simple for today. Um, but you can kind of add some of those in there like so to kind of create some of those triangular shapes. Do I like the movie? The Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman? Honestly, I mean, I've seen it. I remember watching it. I just don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember if it was good. Chat, was this a good movie? I just saw the reference on Pinterest and I was like, yo, this is a fire. This is a fire reference. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta use it. But I honestly don't remember much about the movie and whether or not it was a good movie. Um, I, I feel like it was decent. It was a bad movie. Not a good movie. Damn. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> really? It was a bad movie? Huh? That sucks. That's unfortunate. Like how bad, how bad is bad? Like if you were to rate this movie out of like, out of 10, you know, how bad is, how bad is it bad? Is it like a one? Like, damn, this movie was a cursed movie. I can't believe they made it. Or is it like a, eh, this like a solid five. It's, it's kind of meh, you know, like, like where, where, where is it in the spectrum of bad here? Cause bad can mean a lot of things kind of campy. Out of 10, it's like a six. Okay. Guilty pleasure kind of stuff. I see the stuff that you don't tell people. You're like, yeah, I like some movies. I'm like, what's your favorite? And you're like too scared to say Van Helsing. It's kind of like that. I'm assuming, right? You're like, <laughs> for anyone who likes it, you're like, ah, I can't say it's my favorite because. Yeah, I, I know this movie came out a long time ago, so I, I. It's been a while. Some of you might not even know what this movie is. You might be like, huh? What is this? Why is Hugh Jackman dressed like he's here to slay vampires? Because he is. That's exactly what he's here to do. That's, uh, that's his role in the movie. Vampire Slayer Hugh Jackman. It's like the Spice Girls movie. <laughs> um... You like the monster designs? Oh man, we gotta we gotta look at them at some point because I don't remember. I really don't remember the monster designs. Um, okay, but we're gonna go here and um, so hopefully this makes sense, right? So seeing again those zigzag patterns and also why they are occurring uh, can actually be a tremendous help there. And then also understanding some of those diaper folds that we talked about earlier. So noticing how there's tension going in from each side. Now, again, you don't have to add all these details. So personally, what I would do if this was me um, is I would actually maybe simplify a lot of the, the fabric right here. I'd, I'd probably take out some of this. I'd probably take out some of this and now maybe I'll add in here kind of just one fabric down below here uh, to kind of just showcase that maybe the fabric is kind of uh, situating itself. Um, on top of the on top of the uh the belt there right so you don't have to add in every single line which is something that i always want to tell people um if you want to you can but sometimes what actually helps and we have we're not we haven't done it yet but i'll show you guys really quick but sometimes what will actually help instead is instead of adding in all the lines when you're adding in the shading right so here this is when you can co go in now and be like okay cool here's gonna be some folds here like this right there's gonna be some folds going this way 
and then we're going to have some of that tucking back in here and there's going to be some overlaps there and this is where you can start to add in now some of the um some of the components there which end up actually making that fabric make a little bit more sense right so this is where you can add that shading and stuff afterwards uh to kind of give it that depth that you might be looking for but in this case let's keep it nice and simple right nice and simple for now using some general line art here and then maybe we'll add some details like right here around the buckle to kind of just showcase that there is a lot of uh there's a lot of tension going on there in these areas right here and maybe we'll also clean up the buckle a little bit too so it has more of an interesting design than just this boxy uh, shape that we have. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and then let's do, we're gonna bring out some fabric folds here. Let's see here. Um, Okay, um, let's kind of go in now and let's start adding in the other side. And wow, so many follows just now. Thank you for the follows, guys. Spanish Mom, uh, J.O. also draws, uh, Linky as, as Link and everyone else who's coming in here. He would, great, he would work great with Buffy. <laughs> yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Nah, I don't think they're bots. You guys don't seem like bots, right? Let me know in the chat. For those of you who followed me just now, are you guys bots? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. We haven't gotten a bot follow, bot follow raid thing in a while. Nah, nah, nah. They seem, they seem like your everyday average enthusiastic uh, Twitch viewer. <laughs> Hungry to learn on a weekend. That's hurtful. <laughs> what? You want me to say you guys are bots? <laughs> um no bots here huh yeah right yeah right sure sure I, I believe it um but let's go in and let's start adding in some details on the other side um again keeping in some of that thickness right so thickness is always important here when it comes to fabric guys the more you understand about the fabric you're working with and how thick they are um, the easier it'll be it'll become to actually convey some of the the clothing and the folds and all of those bells and whistles uh, that are on top. Now here we're gonna have um, I believe if I'm understanding the fabric correctly here we're gonna have here the fabric kind of going on top. But first we'll actually add in here um, the shoulder kind of pad area here. And so I'm gonna again use small, medium, large shapes. Uh, before we jump into the details so here we're going to have that large shape and maybe we'll actually cut it back a little bit um, because we do want to have the character kind of uh, turning a little bit sideways right and then maybe we'll add a bit of a break there just to kind of help showcase that shoulder a little bit more there you go um, but then we'll go in here and let's kind of keep adding in more details. So for the arm right here, this is going to be the outer section of the arm. Uh, because of the fabric, it's kind of like a thin fabric. So it'll kind of just pop off a little bit. That's kind of what we're seeing here um, on the reference, right? So we're kind of seeing that fabric kind of go pop off right there. Maybe a little bit lower technically. So this is a little too high. So we're going to kind of bring this one down just a bit to kind of match the, uh, the opposing side there. Right, so some fabric going down this way, and then that sleeve there of the arm, kind of the similar structure here that we have, and I'm going to kind of make it a little bit bigger, right? We're exaggerating those forms again, um, because this will help give us those uh, silhouette shapes we're looking for if we were to turn this into, let's say, an animation or whatever have you. Uh, last but not least, we're going to be adding in here now the folds of the jacket, and I'm going to keep it uh where should we crop it at maybe like right here okay there you go uh again i'm trying to keep today's uh section here a little bit simple so that way we don't have to draw all of the details for this one because um i do want to get to uh drawing a few other examples with you guys but i wanted to show you guys this one kind of as we go through it 
make them take the capture test we'll do it in a bit we'll see if, if we get a few more follows out here we might do a little bit of a capture test thank you for the follows too uh psych psych seeing <laughs> psych welcome in guys happy um happy saturday or sunday even for some of you already i know i know for some of you who are like in, either in australia or the philippines or wherever you're watching from it might already be pretty late so thank you for everyone coming in here today i do hope you guys have enjoyed today's stream so far it's a little bit more of a demo today than it is of a tutorial like i i mean i'm trying to highlight as much as i can of the different areas that i'm seeing um, but today is definitely more of like a demo tutorial kind of day where i'm showing you how I would approach looking at a reference, how I would approach looking at some of the clothing um, as opposed to just, you know, doing like a here's the anatomy of the arms kind of thing, because we could have done that. And I feel like, yeah, you know, um, I could have just shown you guys and, and walked through the different types of clothing folds. But personally, I feel like being able to being able to see and visualize the um being able to see and visualize the clothing in the reference, I think will actually be really helpful. Uh, eventually when you start going in and applying these things afterwards onto uh, your own designs and when you start coming up with drawing clothing from imagination as well, right? So again, when it comes to drawing clothing from imagination, all you gotta do is think about how the fabric works on top of the structures you have, right? So if you wanna draw clothing from imagination, you want to first be able to draw humans and draw the body from imagination. That's what I think, right? Because if you can't draw the basic cylinder shapes and stuff like that, it'll be hard, I think, to start visualizing the... Uh, what's it called? The anatomy that's on top of all that. But again, um, that is just my... That's just my take. So take take what I say <laughs> with a grain of salt. Um, but here I'm going to cut off the legs, not aggressively. Just I want to <laughs> I want us to focus on just certain aspects right here. So we're going to cut off those legs. Say goodbye to the legs. Maybe we'll still add some details for them. Why not? There you go. Uh, maybe we'll add in some more folds here like so and then maybe we'll add like a little bit more thickness actually because I feel like the fabric really thickens up right here um, and then compresses back down as we start to see how it uh, how how that hand opens up a little bit more yeah we cut off his legs <laughs> um let's see uh jason redemption huh all right let me pause the music all right we got a quick little jason redemption out here uh what's up guys it's me jason got a message from chickeny2 wanted me to let you guys know that we're chopping up off these legs just like they're chicken legs <laughs> get them out of here there you go that's your uh that's your jason redemption out here but all right, let's go. Let's go back in and talk about the legs here. Now, when it comes to the legs, all I'm really doing is I'm kind of just going in. Also, I realized uh, this. Hold on. This hand. There you go. A little bit lower there. Much better. Um, so for the legs here, well, all we're going to do is we're going to follow kind of that buckle that we had. So we kind of had this form here uh, for the buckle, right? So we're going to kind of wrap that around here. Um, again, I'm kind of speed running some of this, so I do apologize if it's not like the cleanest drawing here, but I'm not here to try to make a super cool drawing, more so just showing you guys how um, you can start thinking about the clothing and stuff. So I'll, I mean, I'll try to make it look good, you know? But I'm not going to focus on all the crazy details I think that'll make this drawing extra juicy, right? And thank you for quenching my thirst. <laughs> yeah, he might, he might need some assistance after we cut off his leg. Maybe a wheelchair. Yeah, uh, uh, could be, could be a good one. 
to get him. So here, um, for the fabric here, a lot of the compression actually occurs um, right here on the hips and kind of that, that again, that, that tension point, right? So the bending right here around the crotch area. So you'll actually see a lot of like the folds will actually kind of converge around this area. So for those of you who are trying to figure out how to draw this section of the legs, this is kind of what I would do. I would just kind of make sure you're adding in some of those lines and those convergence. Uh, maybe we'll add in a pinch or a fold here to just to showcase the 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 wrapping of the form. So maybe the leg is going to go this way, right? And similar to how we drew that sleeve of the arm earlier, keep in mind here that the fold always wraps around based off of the simple forms that are underneath. So here we have that cylinder shape, and that cylinder shape is kind of uh, curving like this. And so when you add in that fold, you want to go this way, not this way, right? Now, if the leg was going back in, in, in this positioning, then you would curve it like this and cut it down. But because the leg is actually kind of standing a little bit more forward here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wrap it this way. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat if that made any sense or if that didn't make any sense. Um, but basically what I'm trying to say here is pay attention to the form underneath and the way that it's actually positioned and that'll help you better understand better create some visibility in the actual clothing that we have all right i hope that made sense um i can try to do another demo if it didn't make sense you got it okay cool 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 because that's a common mistake. This is a, you guys might be like, ah, oh, case. And that's so obvious. Why you got to tell us this? This is a common mistake. I see a lot of beginner artists make, like when I look at their work and they draw some super cool, super detailed clothing character. But then when you actually look at the, the folds and stuff that they added in, it doesn't start, it doesn't make sense or it doesn't, it doesn't add up to the pose, um, that they're doing. Right. So sometimes you'll see a, a cool drawing and you're like, Hmm, the pose looks cool, but for some reason, why does it look off, right? And sometimes it's because of the clothing you put in. So keep that in mind. I know this might be like a trivial, trivial advice, but you'd be surprised. Okay, uh, we're going to go in here like so, add this portion of the leg here. And then for this one, now this back leg, this is where one I'm going to actually add in here that contour. So now the contour is going the other way. Now you can kind of see here what I did, right? So for the other, for the one on the right, we're going the opposite way because of the nature there of the position of the leg. But in this one, we're actually going to bring it the opposite now and we're going to have that leg kind of uh, wrap the opposite direction. And that is uh, basically it for, for this one. Um, let's go take a look at, let me liquefy a few things out, maybe flip it a little bit here. Um, oh, we have to add some details too. We can't forget the details, but. Let's take a look at, um, yeah, let me add those details in and then we'll be good to go here. Like maybe we'll add some interesting kind of overlaps like right here. Yeah, that looks nice. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So while I, uh, while I go in here and add some more details, uh, this is probably a great time for you guys. If you have any questions in the chat, please feel free to ask them. Uh, whether it's questions about what we're doing today, questions about me, questions about the stream or art in general that you might be struggling with, please feel free to ask in the chat. Again, this is probably the best time while I go in here and just clean up this drawing just a little bit. Uh, but thank you for the follow, Dr. Wolf, also Ugly Potato. Welcome in, guys. Thank you for all the uh, follows today. But yeah, feel free to ask away. This is uh, This is the best time to ask while I'm just going in here and adding in some details. Doo, doo, doo. All 
Yo, how's it going, V? Um, I <laughs> uh, just wanted to pop in and say not only are you inspiring in that you teach people to draw, but with everything going on with AI, it's great to see so many people follow you because they still see value in learning and doing art properly. Man, that's... No, that's... Yeah, no, I didn't even think about that, but... I hope that I, yeah, I hope that I do help people out here, especially in this, in this day and age where I'm sure a lot of you guys have maybe felt a bit of the maybe fear and, or even just frustration of AI art and feeling like, I don't know, some concern about whether or not art will still be, you know, a viable career in the future. Again, I always tell people that no matter how good AI gets, the value of understanding how to make something look good um, is still going to be so valuable because it teaches you how to build an aesthetic and build an understanding of what works and what doesn't work. So no, that, that means a lot to me. I think there's still, there's still so much value and in learning the fundamentals. And then if you want to incorporate again, if you want to incorporate the things that you've learned, um, you know, from, from your fundamentals into utilizing AI, sure. You know, I think there, there can be, and there probably will be a point in time in the future where artists will utilize AI to produce crazier, better works, right? Uh, I don't know when exactly that'll be, <laughs> but uh, when that becomes a little bit more, you know, sustainable and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, I'm here to help out, here to help out however, however way I can. Um, let's see here. How can I get a girlfriend? Uh, I would say focus on yourself, King. That's all, that's all I would say. Focus on yourself, on your craft. Um, you know, improve your life, be a better person. And I think people, people will recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a dating advice stream, but that's what I'd say. You know, like sometimes trying to just be a better person overall is one of the most attractive qualities you can have. There you go. Right. Don't be an asshole. And I don't know what other basic advice I would give. Um, let me see what other outdoor hob, what other outdoor, why do you say how outdoor? Yeah. <laughs> why not indoor? Why can't I say play video games? Um, I, I genuinely do like, um, I do like going to the beach and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'm a big fan of water. Maybe it's, maybe it's the, the, the Filipino in me that makes me want to crave going to the beach. But I, I do like doing that and I like my daily dose of sunshine. You know, I like, I like walking my dog whenever I can. Um, I don't play as much sports as I used to, like back when I was in college and back when I was in high school. So, but I think that's mostly a byproduct of just, um, not having enough time. You know, you kind of have to pick and choose sometimes what you're, what you're doing. And unfortunately I put a lot of those activities in the back burner. Though maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should uh, change my routine. But I like how you focus on outdoor. It's like, dang, I can't say, I can't say playing video games, which is what I do like to do as well. Uh, thank you for the follow too. Disobey K. Uh, welcome in. Um, case I'm got crazy Riz. If y'all didn't know, <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know about that. I'm not. I'm not here to to talk about Riz. Mm, let's see. Yeah, I agree with that too. Vi vivacious. Do you think it'd be worth to buy an iPad for Procreate? Um, honestly, I look, I genuinely really like the iPad. I always tell people all the time the iPad is a great tool. Um, but you know, there's other options to get as well, but I personally like the iPad. So if you were to ask me like, is, is getting the iPad worth it? If you have the means for it, if you got the money to, to do it, sure. Why not? I think the iPad is great. It's one of the best, uh, best, uh, drawing tools that I have, I've used in a, in a very long time. And I've used a fair amount. I've used my Wacom Cintiq Pros. I've used even cheaper stuff like the Wacom Bamboo. I've used my XP Pen 22 inch pro. I also have the XP Pen Artist 12. Um, so I have used a fair amount of, um, of tools but I personally think the iPad is still my go-to. It's my go-to for work. It's my go-to for, um, 
for personal stuff. It's my go-to for sketching. It's a really, I think, flexible, uh, flexible tool. Is this stream sponsored by by Apple? No, it's not. But I wish it was. Apple, hey, if you're looking to if you're looking to sponsor your boy, hit me up. I'm I'm ready. I'm sure the community would be hyped for a uh, a KSM X Apple collaboration. Whoo, that would be big. But no, I'm not sponsored by Apple. Um, I just genuinely like the product, and I also forgot to add the sleeve here. Let me add that real quick. Sheesh. All right, guys. So with that being said, um, we have here the clothing for uh, good old Van Helsing over here. Let me go ahead and um, put away the reference. Let's go ahead and make all of this nice and big. Uh, there you go. And... Let me move some things around as well, too, like this uh, ball fabric diagram thing that we have here. And then let me go in here. Let me hide these colors. Or let me actually, what's the best way to do this? Duplicate, multiply, merge, motion blur, 8%. Okay. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Would you recommend Procreate, CSP, or Sci for beginners? I think Procreate is probably the most beginner friendly. It's also the cheapest, I think. I actually forget how much Sci costs, if it even costs anything. Um, Procreate always pixelates the heck out of your lines. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. Guys, really quick, I do run ads on my stream every hour. One's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. But if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a Prime sub. But either way, I hope to see you guys after the ad break. So there you go for those of you who uh, do get an ad out here. Um, Size slaps. I mean, I just, I just haven't used it. Um, so <laughs> I am, I am 100% biased. Yes. I just haven't used, uh, Psy. So I, I can't really speak on how much Psy costs and, and all that stuff, but I'm sure it's good. I mean, it's been around for a while, uh, considering all the other programs that exist. I'm sure, I'm sure Psy is a pretty good tool. Um, also guys, if I did miss any questions in the chat, please feel free to just retype them in the chat. I oftentimes miss some questions out here. So um, let me see here. Do I have any tips for helping with pixelated lines on Procreate? Um, I would say there's a couple things I would say. One, you can download my brush pack. Um, there are some free brushes on there and there are also some paid, uh, brushes on there, which are, which you're able to grab. Oh my bad. Wrong, wrong command. Uh, brush right here. Um, so you can, you can do that. But um, other things you can do is one, you can increase your canvas size, but also I want to let you guys know that in general, um, the way that Procreate works is everything is anti-aliased. Um, and so everything will always naturally have um, a, a blur effect. And that's just what anti-aliasing does. But I'll show you ways to get around that. And um, let me give me a sec. Let me just kind of I'm going to merge this together. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put it right here <laughs> and then I'm going to take all this. Mmm. 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 Yes. That's what we needed to do this whole time. There you go. Just have it in its own little section there. Um, thank you for the follow Draxion, um, a cloud boy and most drippy and disobey K. Um, let's see here. So many questions. I missed one earlier. Um, pixel question. There was that one as well. Uh, let me see. Just stumbled upon a stream and appreciate that you're doing, uh, what, what are your go-to practices and or general things to do when the creative juices don't flow as well as they usually do? Oof. Ooh, first of all, welcome in. That's a good question. Um, 
if I feel like the creative juices are not flowing, what I'll usually do is I'll do a study. So I'll try to find some of my favorite artists, you know, see what they're cooking up. And then maybe I'll study what their work is. I'll be like, okay, well, this artist is doing something really cool. Let me go ahead and see if I can, you know, take some of their style a little bit there. So sometimes I'll do stuff like that. Um, sometimes I'll just, uh, sometimes I'll just draw for fun. Like I'll just kind of like draw whatever and, and kind of don't have that expectation that it's supposed to look good. Uh, sometimes that helps out a lot. But no, that's a great, that's a great question. I think um, everyone has a different way of dealing with that problem. Um, it's really good to study. Currently, you're doing fundamentals. Nice. Yeah. For those of you wondering, by the way, um, my fundamentals are I have a fundamentals boot camp right here on my YouTube channel. It's again, a 30 day challenge, a 30 day class that actually goes over um, it goes over all of the fundamentals of character design from anatomy to posing your characters in perspective to all the facial feature details to even stuff like this where we talk about clothing. We've talked about hair. Um, we do a lot of different uh, topics out here on my streams. Again, I, I mostly teach out here on Twitch. So if that is something you guys like, um, then you are definitely in the right place. Whether that be my YouTube channel or that be um, my, my live streams here. Um, let me see. There was a question earlier. Right. So the pixel thing, going back to that pixel question really quick. So there's a couple ways again to deal with pixels, but in, I think in general, uh, Procreate will always have some pixelation. That's just how Procreate works. Though I will be releasing some brushes that are based off of what the brushes I use for work. And these brushes don't have any anti-aliasing. Though, if you liquefy and transform them, they will end up still using, they will still end up having some of the anti-aliasing features. That'll, that'll just never go away, unfortunately. Um, but let me see here. Go back to this brush. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of adding in a few little kind of nice, you know, changes here to make this look more aesthetic for you guys. There you go. And we'll do a solid black for this as well. Just some simple uh, color blocking there. Cool. Well, there you go. We got some nice colors here. Uh, let me see here. I have a small out of topic question. What's a great way to add detail to anime hair? I can manage to draw the general silhouette of the hairstyle, but I, but I struggle adding the necessary details. Ah, yeah. So I would say, take a look at, um, take a look at day 20 where I actually go over how to draw hair, right? So this day I did the hair tutorial stuff here. Um, but then I would also check out day, I think this day, day two, where I show you guys how to draw kind of in that detailed anime hairstyle, right? So day two of my boot camp, we do a demo on that as well too. So, um, that's what I would say. Great question. Um, do you have any tips on finding out your art style? Ah, okay. Let me see here. One Piece is your uncle. I do love One Piece. One Piece is great. Um, but let me go ahead here and let's see art style, right? Art style. So I think the thing about art style, guys, is art style is something that you already have. Everyone has a style. Uh, whether or not it's an, it's an obvious or clear definitive style is another matter. But I do think um, everybody has a style. Um, it's more about building out and refining that style over time. Now, that is not to say that you can't develop a style. For example, if you work in the animation industry, oftentimes you'll have to work on a show or a production that is very different from your own style. And so the question then becomes, how do you learn how to acquire a style? And the best thing that I would recommend to people is to actually study the style of the shows that you're working on or the styles that you want to achieve. So here's an example of this. Um, 
Last year when I was adding some character model sheets for Legend of Korra, I showed you guys how you can actually go in here, break down these character designs, and really get into the detail of understanding how the proportions of the head works, how do the details and the structure work. Like for example, look at how parallel some of these lines are. Look at how the brows actually line up with the hairline, the number of detail that they add into the hair and stuff, breaking down all those forms. And you can even do that with the full body poses as well, learning their proportion and structure. And this is how you can start to study the style of a particular show. Um, usually in animation, these are called style guide sheets, um, sheets that basically tell you how to draw in a particular style for the production that you're working on. Um, but that is how I would recommend it. So for example, if you want to learn how to draw in the Naruto style, what I would recommend is you go on Google and you type in Naruto character sheets. You'll see all the characters posing in different perspectives, different angles. You'll see them wearing different clothing. Sometimes you'll see zoom ins on their face with different expressions. And that is what I would recommend you study. Look at those things and then you'll be able to, I think, better uh, utilize those things for your own drawings. Right. Um, that's so that's that's what I'll say about that. Um, how did I get my position at Powerhouse? Yeah, so for those of you who are wondering, by the way, welcome in. Uh, my name is Kasem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, perspective, gesture, to all things related to character design. And I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm prepping to work as a designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you guys are like anime or animation, or you want to hang out with my dog who is chilling over there uh, do leave a follow out here on twitch and i hope you guys enjoy uh, my content so far uh, thank you for the follows uh, fire primoid uh, draxion and a cloud boy and thank you for the follow hamzy as well how did i get my position at powerhouse um i applied i mean it wasn't like a <laughs> like a secret technique. Um, I applied. I submitted my portfolio. Here's my portfolio. Um, I did some interviews. I did uh, I did an art test with them, and uh, yeah, and then I got the job. So it wasn't like a secret technique. Here's the secret strategy of how to get the job. If you're asking like what did I do to prepare to get a job at Powerhouse, um, that you can actually check out my boot camps for because that is uh, that is oh, I can't even type boot camp. Sheesh. There you go. So my boot camp there is basically what I did to prepare all the fundamentals and things that I learned to actually uh, be able to uh, work in the industry, if that makes any sense. Um, and thank you for all the follows, guys. I had to get good first. Yeah, basically. Um, cool. Well, um, if there's any other questions I might have missed, uh, thanks again for uh, appreciate you guys coming out here. I probably won't answer all those questions, but... Uh, maybe when we come back and do another set of questions, uh, I just want to kind of color this one out real quick and then we'll jump into the next set of heads there. Dark Anomaly, thank you for uh, coming in here. Welcome back. And also Lazar Official, thanks for the follow. Yeah. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's stream. Um, again, I'm a pretty educational art streamer out here on Twitch. Um, your intro for some reason gives me former software engineer. Uh, yes, I am. I used to be a software engineer. Yes, that is true. <laughs> uh, I was a software engineer for about five years before I decided that I didn't want to be an engineer anymore and that I wanted to work um, as an artist. And so I made a game plan. I listed out the things that I wanted to learn and the things that I wanted to study. Um, and then that was it. And then I, I stuck to that plan, worked really hard, became a freelancer, did some gigs as a freelancer. And then eventually was able to pivot to doing more full-time studio work. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, how do I get your past bootcamp stuff? Yeah, so you're already subscribed. So everybody who's subscribed, you'll actually get access to videos on my Twitch page, which will give you access to all the videos there. And you, if you make sure to connect your Twitch account to your Discord, you'll also get all the resources that are available. Now, um, if you guys didn't know, on my Discord channel... Everybody who was watching today can actually download the resources that are free to grab. Um, here we have today's worksheet, which is this one. Here is a clothing breakdown sheet that I covered last year on my stream. Um, and then also here are the seven different types of clothing folds right here explained on this sheet. And again, these are free to grab while I'm live. So make sure to grab them. All right. 
Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, I would say if you are subscribed though, you'll have access to a few other pages, um, on a different section there of my, of my discord channel. Um, oh yeah. If you want to buy them, if you want to buy all the sheets and stuff too, you can also go check out my gum road and that's where you can go to on the gum road to grab that. Let's see. Is news about the next phase of Legend of Korra really? Um, again, I can't, I'm not going to tell you guys anything that about shows or whatever because it's under NDA. So legally, I can't tell you guys anything about what I'm working on and all of that stuff. So just know I'm working on stuff. That's that's it. And and stuff is happening. There you go. Um, how important is it to have a structure to your learning? I keep jumping around learning something here and there. Well, you tell me. Do you feel like it's working for you? For some people, that works really well, right? Having that flexibility of not having to be tied down to a curriculum and going in from wherever you feel is right. Sometimes that works for some people. Um, but for some people, they feel like having a curriculum and having a structure is what helps them stay accountable and, and be able to keep progressing with their growth, right? And sometimes it's about a bit of both, right? Having a curriculum, but not being super fixated on that curriculum such that you could try to do different things here and there whenever you feel like it, right? Uh, what platform did you apply on LinkedIn or the company website? Uh, company website. I don't think it matters though. I think you can apply through LinkedIn. You can apply through a recruiter. Um, yeah. But alrighty, guys, let's get into um, let's get into the next example here. All right. So let me move some of these things around. Uh, oh shoot, was this the mannequin structure? Hold on. Uh oh, hold on. Let me show you guys first of all what I did today. All right, so here is all of the details that we have. Cool, cool, cool. Let me merge all that. Um, so here was the mannequin structure that we had originally, which I realize now. I uh, shoot. Let me let me go ahead and piece all these back on here, and let's move that. I'll just figure that out later. It's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shrink this one down just a little bit here. So that way we can still have it. You guys can see how we did that breakdown. And here is the sleeve. So this one is going to be all of this. I'm going to merge that together Oops. Uh, here. And I'll put that, I don't know, somewhere down here, I guess. We'll compile it later, um, but let's go take a look at another reference here. And this one's going to be focusing on the lower legs or, or the lower body here. In particular, I'm going to be talking about how to add some of these folds here when it comes time to actually drawing out legs and pants, especially when you're talking about, um, especially when you're talking about uh, clothing where maybe the character is sitting or their legs are bent, right? And you have all of those kind of folds going on. So I've actually already roughed out here a general mannequin that we can use. Now, again, um, you don't have to use a mannequin here, but I usually use the mannequin as a demo for you guys to show you um, just how you can start thinking about some of these structures of the the human body how to simplify them into things like cylinders boxes spheres and so forth all right let's see here but yeah um uh, as for the application thing i just applied uh, there was no like secret sauce nothing crazy that i did to uh you know uh get get the job or whatever all right so let's go ahead and talk about this example right here and this will be a fun one so when it comes down to uh drawing out this form um let's talk a little bit about what's going on here now again earlier if you weren't here there are a bunch of different types of clothing folds um that you might see when you're approaching a drawing in this case right here you're going to be seeing something called a half lock fold here and these are again the folds that go on top of each other and are created due to compression right so here the um the fabric is kind of compressing on top of each other and so you're going to be seeing this form overlap like so boom boom uh right there right um other folds you're going to be seeing are also going to be these diaper folds right here 
So the diaper folds occur uh, again when you see two different tension points right here acting on the fabric and that's going to create kind of this U shape right here for the fabric. So you can kind of see that right there, right? U shape for the fabric. Um, other kind of areas right here, you're going to see some more half lock folds right here because of the bunching of the knees. Um, you're going to see here, take a look at this. These are going to be those zigzag folds I talked about. And that's from when the fabric compresses this way, but not enough that it actually starts to overlap stuff, um, on top of each other. Um, other kind of folds here, you'll kind of see here, this is going to be that, uh, that drop fold, right? So you have that tension point of the knee right here and you'll notice how that fabric kind of goes down this way. So this, these are the, again, the things that I'm trying to tell you guys, because once you start seeing these types of fabric and stuff, um, and seeing how the folds actually work, you'll be able to then draw these things out from imagination or whatever have you on your own, uh, on your own characters, right? So right, right here, notice how this is going to kind of go down. Uh, these are going to be creating their own kind of pinching folds right here, right? So looking for those key moments, like those key points. So like right here, that's going to be that tension point of the knee and look at how all these lines converge to that tension point. It's actually crazy. Like once you see it, you're going to be like, yo, what the heck? Were they always there? The answer is, yeah, they've always, they've always been there, right? So clothing always follows a pattern. Right. It follows a pattern of gravity and it also follows a pattern of whatever it's wrapping around. It's not arbitrary. Like even the way that this fold curves is going to be following the contour there of the cylinder that it's underneath. OK. Now, you might be wondering, Kaysom, well, how do I know how long something needs to be? Well, let's say, for example, let's say if you made this leg straight. Right. And this leg was straight and there was no folding going on this right here is going to be the same distance that you would just take down this way, right? And then you would take all of this and you would know that if this is going to be the longest point of the fabric, all you have to do is make sure everything else is going to be less than that. So here we're going to add less than that, less than that. Maybe add a bit of a fold here for compression. Huh? You see what I'm saying? Fabric and clothing guys don't have to be super difficult. Uh, it's the same process here, right? You know that this has to be here. So if we're going to take the length of the leg and bring it all the way out and then kind of curve it back here, this fabric should not be that much longer. Uh, what is my gaming channel? Here is a link to my gaming channel. Uh, for those of you who want to see my games, I do have an alt account on Twitch where I play games. Um, here's another section right here where you're going to be seeing some fabric folding uh, going on right here. Take a look at this. Right. And this is again, notice how this is occurring because of the leg and the, the structure here of the leg. It's creating a little bit of a pinch there on the side of the leg. So let's go ahead now and actually apply all of those things that we just talked about um, onto this mannequin structure. And I'm also going to do a little bit of a simplified approach here as well. So we're not actually going to go in and add all the crazy details. Uh, we're just going to kind of keep it nice and simple. Uh, first thing here I'm going to do is let's actually add in uh, the waistband right here. So we're going to kind of bring that waistband in like so. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, nice and simple waistband. Let me lower the opacity even further here. And then now let's go in and say, okay, well, we know that there's going to be a tension point here and a tension point here. How do these tension points occur? Well, they occur because we have here uh, the stitching of the fabric on both sides. And do I have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. I've been uploading on there for the past two months and um, it's been going really well. We've already hit over 5,000 subscribers over there on YouTube. So thank you everybody for supporting the streams um, or supporting my YouTube channel. If you guys like my tutorial videos, but maybe you can't watch everything uh, because of, you know, you can't watch it live or whatever, or you want to watch it slowed down or sped up. My YouTube channel is really great for that. It's also cleaned up because my editors work on making sure the videos are a little bit more polished. Um, so yeah, go check out my YouTube channel if you guys like my content over here. Um, but now, uh, going back here to the drawing, notice here we're going to use that tension point that's created by the seam of the pants there. And we're actually going to go and bring in, notice, look here, look at this, diaper fold. Ooh. So I'm kind of bringing in here that diaper fold, but I'm also keeping in mind that the fabric is going to be wrapping across, right? It's going to be going this way, creating a little bit of that dip. And then this is going to be that... Um, this is going to be that uh, half lock fold that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to raise this one up just a tad bit here, raise the pelvis, 
right? So we're building up all of these structures over time. And this is, I think, slightly, I think, more understandable um, than just trying to randomly draw every detail, right? You guys can kind of see now, like when you look at this, you're like, okay, this makes sense right let me know in the chat does this does this make sense guys like now that you're seeing it like this okay so going back here right so we have here our two our kind of our diaper folds going in this way right so again keeping it nice and simple we're not adding in too much detail but this is going to be some of the fabric going in here some of the the stitching of this fabric clothing and then um, other things that we're going to have here too is you want to make sure you're keeping track of all of the stitching of the fabric so in this case right here um, this girl she's wearing these pants and so you're going to have kind of that stitching going on right here and that also that stitching will also make sure um, you want to make sure that it's also being captured here so here even though we have that diaper fold we're also going to have here that pinching going in this way of the um, what's it called? Oh, the pants there. So this is why some of these things are happening. So I'm trying to like help you guys visualize and see these things a little bit more to understand what's going on. So here that diaper fold now actually gets kind of pushed back a little bit here. Now we're not going to add all the details again. So keep that in mind. We don't have to add all the crazy details of our clothing, but it's good to understand what's going on. Now on the backside right here, let's just kind of add in here her uh, glutes. Maybe right here, that stitching is also going to kind of open up a fabric piece right there. So just slowly building up kind of the forms here. Um, and then we're going to go in here and let's add, let's say, uh, because of the way that the thighs and stuff work, we're going to probably have some compression right here of the legs. So we're just going to add a little bit of subtle compression there. And then we'll kind of wrap this one down. And this is where you can start thinking about compressing. So this is where that cylinder is going to be. So it's actually a little bit more like right here, right? We're going to start thinking about that cylinder and how that's going to compress the leg. Um, and we're going to be wrapping around the contour. So notice how I'm not going this way around the legs, right? I'm not curving the fabric this way because the cylinder is going this way, right? The cylinder is going this way. Um, and so we're going to make sure that when we do add the fabric, that we're following that contour there. So let's go ahead and kind of uh, imagine there was a pinching section right here, that tension point right here. Let's go ahead and use that to create some of the fabric that's wrapping around, um, that's wrapping around the leg right here, okay? So we're gonna go in here. Uh, let me just add a few more details. Let me erase some of these forms right here. And you can start to see how it starts to make sense, right? The reason why fabric is doing what it's doing usually there's a reason why if there's any time that i feel like the fabric is not making sense to me it's because it's going to be a zigzag fold uh drawing clothing is pretty fun if you know what you're doing exactly 100 percent. i mean i think drawing in general can be fun doing anything in general is fun if you know what you're doing a good example of this is um i started to i started to recently play valorant and before I tried playing Valorant, I had no clue what was going on. But now that I understand how to play the game, I actually enjoy it a lot more. Am I good at it? No, I'm completely trash. But understanding how the game works and understanding what's going on and how to play the game makes it, I think, a little bit more enjoyable. And similarly, that's kind of how I think about art too, right? The more you understand what's going on with whatever it is you're drawing, um, I think personally, the easier it becomes to... Uh, to draw those things out so let's go in here um, let's add maybe that pinching fabric here and maybe we'll kind of bring this one down and we'll add some fabric that's kind of uh you know bunching around here like so and then this is where we're going to start to maybe see some of that foreshortening going in now right that little dangerous f word that we've talked about here now, out of curiosity, how many of you guys in the chat struggle with uh, foreshortening? Put an F in the chat if you're like, KSM, man, oh man, I don't know what it is, but every time I try to draw something in foreshortened or kind of go into perspective, I get wrecked. I get wrecked every time. If you guys want to learn the secret to understanding how foreshortening works, all of it comes down to really just establishing very subtle shapes. S subtle details you don't actually have to draw all the crazy forms oftentimes just adding in subtle overlaps that build up over time um, is actually good enough 
But here, let's kind of go in on this leg. We're going to add a little bit of a fold right here. Uh, again, we're going to have all of these folds converging to that knee section that we talked about, right? So we're going to talk about that tension point there, the knee. Um, so we're going to kind of bring that in there. And I'm adding in, I'm actually already kind of doing a little bit of foreshortening now, but all I'm really doing is I'm adding in now um, just these like subtle, subtle overlaps like so um, let's kind of bring that convergence right here for this knee but i'm also going to go in here i'm going to leave that line separated there so that way we have some we have a nice gap for the volume and there you go so i'll show you, i'll highlight to you guys where those overlaps are going to be so like right here um let me circle some of these things mm. right here subtle overlap right so there's like a subtle overlap and then there's a hard overlap. What you want to do is you want to mix and match some of those things out here. So this is a hard overlap right here, but this one's a subtle overlap. This one right here is kind of like a subtle overlap right here. Um, so you want to kind of mix and match those things so that way you have a natural slight tendency to do foreshortening. Now this is for clothing, but even for the human body, I've shown you guys a few poses that we've done here and you'll notice how subtle overlaps can also be utilized for drawing something that's moving in perspective. Or if you have this pose like this, right? Shout out to one piece. Um, all of these things utilize kind of these subtle foreshortened techniques that you can do to be able to give your characters more depth without having to actually uh draw everything out and all the cylinders and whatever have you so here's a few examples of that um but we're going to be utilizing those uh same techniques here guys for actually drawing some of the clothing folds too uh, thank you for the follows too mark d onya and everyone else coming in here one piece i know i love one piece the one piece the one piece is real um let's see so we're gonna go in uh, let me actually add a few kind of things here as well so here okay so this one i i normally if this was for animation i normally wouldn't add this but for the sake of like adding for the illustration um what's going on here is you're gonna if you look at the reference you might be like hey sam what the heck is this section right here there's so many folds going on this section of fold right here is actually again it's going to be called that zigzag fold this is going to be the section right here that's created um oh, my bad uh that section here that's created when you actually go in and kind of add these bunching of forms together now there's a lot of ways to convey this um, I usually try to go for these triangular shapes and leave open areas right here for the folds. So you can kind of add a little bit of that there. Uh, maybe we'll add maybe like one more like down here for the fabric going this way, right? And so if you really want to add some depth and detail, sure, you can add some of these. But personally, I, I, I don't add a lot of these um, unless I feel like I'm doing something that's like a very... Uh, highly rendered illustration, but I try to add them in to kind of help establish more structure here um, on the fabric and I'm trying to line them up as well in certain areas that actually make sense, right? Uh, and then I try to keep them open as well because they're, they're not going to be they're not always going to be stuck right on um, each other and overlapping each other. So giving some, some of that fabric room to kind of fold and stuff, I think is going to be uh, where you can do that. Now, again, I'm not going to be adding a lot of those. Like maybe I'll add one or two for, for as a demo, but for the most part, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Uh, we'll add in here. Maybe let's kind of go back in here. Oops. Like I'll add a few here to show some depth, but for the most part, uh, I think we're good. So let me kind of go like this actually maybe like open it up that way So we're showing here that the fabric is kind of pinching back in so it's kind of going in here like that uh, And then here we'll have maybe like this other fabric That's kind of going in here like so right so again only add it I think if it if it helps add to the piece otherwise it might just be adding more confusion overall to uh, to the illustration so this is what I would probably settle with here. Uh, but then we're going to go kind of bring this one in. So there's going to be the fabric overlapping this way. Uh, the stitching of the fabric is going to go inward here. And um, I think from there, let's kind of talk a bit now. So let's kind of maybe add a little bit of a line right here just to soften out that transition. Um, anywhere else you want to add here? 
So we have this overlap right here, which we don't actually have to do too much detail for. Just a subtle bump sometimes uh, can showcase enough. Now we're going to go in and remember what I talked about. So this tension point right here, as long as you have the clothing fabric going back into this tension point, going back here, it'll, it'll usually make sense. So here we'll go like this. I'm keeping that fabric kind of bunched around this section of the knee. Um, here, maybe we'll have another section right there. And then as the leg kind of goes further and further out, this is where you're going to start to see bigger folds going on here. So this leg will maybe kind of wrap this way. And then you'll have like this huge kind of line right here for this portion of the pants, right? Uh, and then maybe the gravity, gravity will kind of bring this one down. So you'll kind of see the fabric going down this way instead. So always keep in track, always keep in mind here, gravity and also tension points. These sections right here are going to kind of overlap. We got some, some forms there. And then we have the remainder there of the structure of the leg, which maybe might go like this. And then we'll go on the other side. Let me get rid of uh, this arrow right here real quick. But yeah, I think this is a good... So the reason why I picked this example because I feel like it's a good one that actually showcases a lot of the fabric really getting bunched up here. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you can still make a lot of sense out of it and utilize the the kind of the breaking down here of the forms to be able to then incorporate that into your own uh, style and technique, right? So like maybe right here, I'm going to add a little bit of a fabric kind of bunching right here. Uh, and then from there, we can actually use that now to kind of uh, maybe add a little bit of a section like that. Okay. But again, this is um, this is if you want to add all these details. What I might do um, after this is I might show you guys how I would simplify this if we were to do this for like animation um, or whatever have you. But let's just say this is what we have right now for the leg. Um, nice and easy. And again, as long as you're focusing on bringing in all of those, uh, those areas here back to that tension point of the knee, um, it should roughly make some sense, right? And that's, that's all that matters is it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. We're not here to copy the reference exactly. We're here to kind of establish our own understanding of the leg that we have. So. Um, other things you can do as well too. So this is something I learned while I was studying under CDA is sometimes what you can do is you can add detail to areas that are going to be the most dense or the most interesting. So in this case right here, um, there's going to be a lot of detail and folds in this kind of like crotch area right here because that's where we're going to be seeing the bending, right? Um, the bending here of the pelvis with the leg there. Um, but once we get to like this portion of the leg, there's not really much going on here. So we don't have to add details if we don't want to, we can, we sure we could add details. We could add some folds here like this and add maybe a space here, but visually speaking, it doesn't actually add too much. Now here, I'm going to kind of go back in and I'm going to add some more details this way, right? So I'm going to add some like details for the knees and stuff because that might actually give us more, uh, more understanding of what's going on. So I, that's, this is what I usually think about whenever I'm adding in details for clothing as well is like, what areas do I feel like actually benefit from getting details and which ones can we leave, you know, nice, nice and simple out here. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's go in now and let's draw out the other leg here. Um, let's see. All right, so we have here now this other leg and we're going to again utilize the same technique. So we have here this tension point. So this is going to be the, the tension points, for those of you who don't know, are going to be the areas where the fabric are either going to be sitting on, where the fabric is going to get pulled, or where gravity is going to do some work there to pull some of that fabric. So here, because we know the tension point is here, um, I'm going to add here kind of the shape for the bending here of the knee. And so you can try to use some of these like triangular shapes to establish some of that bending. Um, the fabric is pretty loose as well. So we're going to let gravity uh, kind of loosen up right here. And again, this is not going to be exact with the reference, so that's okay. But we're going to try to do our best to kind of just use the forms that we have. And then from those forms, be able to establish some structure. So here we're going to kind of... Uh, wrap around this way. Maybe this is where we're going to have that stitching of the fabric here. Um, and then here, if we wanted to, we can add. So this is kind of what the reference has. It has like this zigzag fold that kind of opens up here like this. You don't have to add that. So I'm, instead, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a subtle, uh, subtle overlap like that. And that should be pretty good. Um, but here's what I'll do, guys. I'll I'll work on the rest of the leg here. And if you guys have any questions, this is probably the best time to ask it in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to keep working on here. But feel free to ask me any questions. I'm going to just start building up some of the details for this one. And then I think we'll be good to go. Um, oh, thanks for the follows, too. Wow. Schmoop. Uh, chocolate, chocolate cookies. Chocolate cookies. I see you playing. Uh, and everyone else here. Morbidly cheese. Wait. Are these are these real follows guys or are these bots? Okay, because they're all like food related. We got chocolate chips and then we had cheese following me right now. I'm a little suspicious. Thanks for the follows. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, boy. Uh welcome back in. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully y'all are doing well today. Enjoying the stream so far. Enjoying the weekend as well. Thank you for the follow. My gender is gone. Thank you. For, do you really get a lot of bots sometimes? You never know. That's the thing, right? So on Twitch, sometimes you never know if people are people are coming in because they they like your stream or if they're just bots. <laughs> I have no clue sometimes. So I just got to make sure. I just got to double check, you know, okay, are these actual people or these bot people. Thank you for the follows. Even if you are a bot, I appreciate you guys coming in here today. Now, here's what I'm going to talk about as well. I'm going to talk about small, medium, large shapes, right? So don't forget about small, medium, large shapes. I think it's an over, uh, underrated, I should say, underrated technique in, in drawing. And we've talked about it a few times already. Um, but here, in this example here, you can talk about how small, medium, large shapes can you can be utilized to convey certain designs and we'll actually utilize it right now so here i'm going to use a large shape for the upper leg uh, but then as we get into the folds here i'm going to open up the folds going this way and that's going to create like a medium shape right there right so a little bit of a gap there uh, and then on the uh, intersection right here this is where we're going to have kind of like that that small shape so large medium small right so you can actually see this all the time in clothing, but even if you don't see it, you can actually add it because sometimes, again, um, sometimes the reference isn't as good as what you can draw, right? So you can add more to it, change up the design to make it look more aesthetically pleasing overall, as opposed to just, you know, copying the reference exactly. So here we're going to have some overlaps uh, of the forms going in here. And then remember what I talked about, right? So if this is the length of the leg and the length of the pants right here, then everything else just needs to be shorter, uh, shorter than that. So here we're going to kind of bring this pants down. Uh, maybe we'll see some like one more set of folds right here. So this is going to be that main chunk of folds. Um, it might curve in a little bit more and then we'll see like another set of folds right here. And then there we'll have like some stitching of the pants. Uh, Maybe that's too dark, actually. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is the stitching of the pants. 
<laughs> so it should be lower. Uh, this way, going down here, uh, out this way, in here, and then out here. There you go. Cool. Um, so I'm going to put away the reference now and I'm going to put away that little diagram that we had and let me kind of bring this one up a little bit bigger so we can kind of see this one a bit more as an example here. Um, cheese and Choco doesn't go with each other, but it got you hungry too. I know There's a lot of follows out here today. Thanks for the follow to Alex PNG. Here's what I'll ask. Okay. So for those of you who are coming in here today and following my streams, I would love to know how you guys uh, came across my channel today. How'd you guys find my stream? Was it from uh, recommended? Was it from just finding me through scrolling? Was it from, let me think my Instagram, my YouTube channel, uh, do let me know in the chat. I'm I'm always curious to see what's bringing people out here to my channel um, and what's working and what's not working, you know? So let me go ahead in the meantime, let me just kind of clean up some of the details now uh, because now we've kind of gone in and we've done all the kind of hard work, right? So again, as a, as a reminder, you don't have to add in all the folds and details. You can just add in the ones that I, that you feel like are most important to the scene and give you context overall. Um, I think if anything, what's more important to adding clothing and folds is being able to visualize where those tension points are, how to add those subtle overlaps, and then also being able to add in small and medium large shapes to help make the illustration uh, look and feel maybe a little bit more interesting. Oh, front page recommended. Nice. A lot of recommended out here. Um, I was looking for some cool art streams to draw plays in the background and just some extra help. Nice. Super cool. Category stream looked interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So this is, um, <laughs> for those of you coming in here, welcome in. My name is KSM and I teach art out here on Twitch. Uh, it's, it's a pretty nerdy stream. I will say that much, but you know, we, we try to keep it nice and light, nice and fun out here. Um, you guys can technically follow along. If you guys do enjoy today's content and stuff, you can follow with the worksheets that I upload on the discord channel. And also, um, you can also just check out my YouTube channel if you want to do it later as well too. Cause I know some of you, uh, for example, you know, maybe you're just watching, but you can't really, you can't really draw along today. That's completely fine as well. Uh, but okay. So we've got here this one. I think there's two things I want to do for you guys. Uh, one, I want to show you one example of what it looks like if you were to twist the arm and what kind of folds would occur if you're twisting the arm. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that one here. And then after we do that, um, oh, other than that, I also want to show you guys how I simplify some of these things. Cause if you take a look at this, this is a pretty detailed leg, right? It's got a lot of folds and stuff going on here, but let's talk about how you can maybe simplify this. If you were to maybe work in an animation style type of setting, um, did I miss a drawing your style? Um, I had to put it on the back burner cause I wasn't satisfied with it. So yeah, I know some of you, some of you were eager for the, for my draw in your style. I do apologize. So here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of color this one out just a little bit here. We'll use some just subtle grays to get this one going. And then I'll show you guys how I would take something like this and simplify it uh, for animation. Okay. Let me just fill this one all out here. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to do a draw in your style, but I wasn't happy with how things were looking. So I was like, ah, I'll wait. I'll wait till I draw something that I really am proud of. It's tough. It's tough sometimes. Um, being an artist and critiquing your work.
cool. Um, if you wanted to add some quick shading, we could. So let me just do that really quick. I'll show you guys. Why not? Um, so here's some quick shading that you can do. Usually when it comes to shading, I'm going to be looking for certain areas that are already kind of building the shadow shapes and stuff. So like right here uh, would be a good one, right? So kind of where those creases are going to be meeting. Um, pretty good shapes right there. But I also try to keep it nice and simple. So let's kind of just block in huge chunks there for the shadows. So like right here, this is going to be the underside there of the pants, right? So we're not going to be seeing some... Um, some light there. Maybe we'll see some shadow like right here as well. Uh, let me add a little bit of a line there to kind of showcase the top plane there. Um, so this is kind of what I would do if I were to add some shadows just to kind of start building up some of the forms. But again, this is uh, this is not necessarily what you would do for an anime animation style. So just keep that in mind. Is this is this a uh, clipping mask? There you go. Um, thank you for the follows again. Welcome in everybody. Um, do I use Photoshop? Um, no, I'm I'm currently using Procreate right now. I do use Photoshop on occasion. Um, I mostly actually use CSP for work. So for those of you curious what uh, what Powerhouse uses, it's mostly going to be, uh, interestingly enough, mostly CSP. Let's put all of this in like shadow. All of this stuff right here is going to be in shadow. All of this stuff right here is in shadow. Right. Uh, Octo gear. Hey, thanks for the follow. Why does that sound so familiar? You stream on Twitch, don't you? Octogear? Am I crazy? <laughs> Let me know in the chat if you do or don't. Um, I think I, I think I watch your streams. Unless you're not a streamer, in which case I apologize. I think I'm going crazy. Maybe I'm going crazy. Okay, I have. I have been. Yeah, I was like, why does that name sound familiar? <laughs> Surely I'm not insane, or am I? Sometimes I am. Um, but yeah, this is kind of um, how I do kind of the clothing, guys. Uh, clothing folds and all that bells and whistles out here. Um, right, so just adding in those subtle shapes, adding in those subtle shadows, um, I think can go a long way. And that's mostly it here for the most part now i'll talk a little bit about simplifying the forms and stuff there's also some blending techniques that we're not going to get into today like where to blend and where to soften your shadows because that's a whole other ball game so these are more just kind of like quick blocking of shadows just kind of shadow mapping there uh some of the forms but i think you guys get the idea Oh, uh, Panda B. Hey, thank you so much. Um, thank you for the sub. Seven months. Sheesh. Thank you for the follow too. Kaiser Frog, uh, Tess Gra, and everyone else coming in here. Um, all of the best people are a little crazy. Yeah, no, that might that might be true. I might just be insane. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So let's let's go ahead now, guys. I want to do a quick demo here to show you guys how I would simplify this again if this was supposed to be like something you would do for animation as opposed to maybe like a super highly detailed um highly detailed example right so here we go i'm going to move this one here and i'm going to actually take what's the best way to do this i'm going to take this layer um delete this i'm going to take these two layers group these duplicate them move this one down like so and let me move all of this a little bit this way and move this guy all of this stuff here so many drawings today we did so much it's crazy okay 
So let's talk about how you can possibly simplify this, right? So here we have this example here. So what are we looking for um, in a simplification, right? I think when you're talking about simplification, one of the best things you can utilize is again, small, medium, large, and kind of leveraging that shape design overall. So you can still have all the, you know, all the bending and wrinkles and stuff, but you want to keep some of that uh, mostly in the contour now. And then from the, uh, for the most part here, when it comes to drawing out the legs, we're actually going to keep a lot of the uh, internal details. We're going to get rid of some of those internal details. So here, I think it's still good to have maybe some of the folding here of the of the lines, but we're not going to maybe we don't have to actually kind of bring them out all the way. So here I'm going to kind of showcase the belt, all of that stuff. Uh, because of the fabric, we are going to be adding in still the lines here. And because we have that line, sure, we'll add in this line right here and we'll still keep some of this too. Why not? And then we'll keep this one right here, but we're also going to be looking at simplifying. So here is where maybe that first simplification is going to occur. So here we're having a bunching of the fabric, right? But let me actually kind of bring this fabric up and we're going to do a small, medium, maybe large shape design right here. So here we're going to kind of uh, take some of this like so, maybe bring this one up a bit more. And then from there, I'll, you know, I'll go in here and just add like a line for the fabric going this way. You know, so like it's sometimes small kind of changes like this that simplify the design um, that you'll sometimes see in animation that you can then leverage across the rest of the, the form. So here um, I'm less interested in all the overlapping stuff and I'm just going to add some subtle lines there. Um, uh, this might, you can pet my, yeah, you can pet my dog virtually. Sure. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Thanks for the follow to May, uh, May Ray also Z X X alien, uh, and everyone else is coming in here. Welcome in guys. Glad to have you on here today. Zuki me as well. So let's see here. So here's where things kind of get interesting because you have here all of the details of the clothing here. Now, honestly, in animation, I feel like this would be a little too complicated. Uh, but let's see if we can maybe simplify just a tad bit. Like personally, what I would do is this. I would actually just simplify the fold um, and kind of just have it follow through all the way. So we're simplifying all the harsh lines there and we're going to keep some of it, but we're also not going to add all the details. Now here we're going to add here the, this is still relevant for us because this is part of the, the pants itself. Uh, but now when we get into this section right here, maybe we'll actually just simplify this one down to one, one section like so. Then this section, we'll still keep it there because I think it's a nice section. We'll keep all of this stuff right here. That's pretty good. Um, and then maybe right here is where we'll see some of that simplification happening more. So right here, I might go in like this, kind of clean up, make sure that design shape is good. And maybe we'll only keep, maybe we'll only keep like one of the lines, right? So we'll keep this line right here and then we'll kind of bring this one down and maybe we round it out too, but for the most part, just kind of keep it in there. Why is he so sad? No, he's not sad. He's just sleeping. <laughs> He's just laying down. Guys, I don't know if you guys have... Dogs are not crazy like 100%, you know? Especially big dogs. So he's a, he's a pretty big dog. But big dogs just sleep. That's like all they do. They sleep like 80% of the time. <laughs> That's literally all the dogs do. Uh, thank you for the follow. Uh, Hero, here I am. Also, guys, really quick. I do run ads on my stream every hour. One's going to be running right about now. And these ads do help keep my streams uh, monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. If you don't want to see any ads, consider um, subscribing or using a prime sub. But either way, thank you for your support. And I hope to see you guys after um, after the ad break. So there you go. And let me here click this one here for the ad break. Yeah, how's it going? Uh, me, uh, my avo. Welcome back in. So we're going to look for small, medium, large shapes here. So even in the folds here, let's see if we can simplify the folds, right? So we're going to go one, simplify two here. We're going to go three, simplify here. Uh, and then we're going to do, sorry, one, two, three, like so. So 
again bringing in all of those different types of folds simplifying in all those other details that we don't need anymore nice and simple uh big dogs are actually cats yeah i feel like they're definitely i mean not all big dogs they're just probably like the golden retrievers are probably like super energetic but i feel like a good majority as far as i know a good majority of big dogs are just sleeper dogs they just sleep all day every day Um, here is maybe where it's going to get a little interesting because we do have kind of the, the fabric bunching here. So I might, I might even simplify this just to kind of showcase the fabric, uh, going this way a little bit like that. You know, it, it really does depend, uh, on what you're going for. But I think overall, a lot of the, a lot of the details are going to get simplified. And so we're just going to get rid of that. And I think for this leg, a lot of the simplification comes at um, removing all the stuff that we had for the that hip section, right? But otherwise, um, that's going to be mostly it. And then maybe we'll still keep one of the lines here. Like so. Cool. Um, oh, thanks for the follow. T-Power. Let's see here. Doo -doo -doo. So we got here all the folds. Cool, cool, cool. Nice and simple. Uh, and then here, we're going to add that stitching. We're not going to add any of the other details right there. Like maybe we'll add this one. I kind of like how it breaks up the shape just a little bit there. Uh, but then we're going to go here. Uh, large um small and then here medium that's it that's all you need boom you get rid of everything else large small medium and uh yeah that's kind of how i would think about simplifying uh, some of these, some of these shapes, somebody redeemed puppy power. Oh shoot. Here we go. I don't know who, but there. Um, but yeah, let me know guys, are you, um, are you guys back from the ad break? Let me know if you guys are back from the ad break. Thanks again for everyone sticking around out here. Appreciate it guys. Uh, let's see. Let me go back here. Yeah, um, for those of you coming back in here, so basically right now I'm just showing you how I simplify uh, from that top portion here all the way to that bottom portion. Really just again leveraging small, medium, large shape design. Nothing too crazy, I think, overall when it comes to when it comes to adding in more detail or less detail, I should say, uh, for your clothing. So here's that simplified shape right there. You can kind of see it there. Quench with some of that cactus juice. Quench. It's the quenchiest. Good old cactus juice. Is it just me or is Procreate so satisfying? Honestly, I don't know. That's, uh, maybe <laughs> maybe it's just you. I, I, I like Procreate. I actually genuinely do like Procreate. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Hopefully that makes some sense for you, um, for, the, for you guys to see. Um, other things I want to do is I want to make sure we're breaking some of that asymmetry or breaking, breaking some of those parallel lines that I see here. Um, but yeah, nice and simplified. I think it's, hold on, it's probably easier to see without the coloring. So if I get rid of the coloring here, right? So a simplified version here, um, so I'll write this one down, right? Simplified complex. Hmm. So it's just cleaner, a lot less details, 
simplification on the folds using um, as little as little lines as possible to convey um, to convey the structure and instead leveraging things like the uh, the contour to be able to showcase some of that uh, would you say the simplified still requires knowledge of the complex mm, not necessarily I think if anything what's more important is having knowledge of where things are bending right because if you can have knowledge of where things are bending I think that's actually way more valuable um, and so in particular here I'm talking about you know I'm talking about this area of the the pelvis right here um, and the and the the legs all of that stuff so as long as you know that you can actually get pretty far with simplifying the forms and I think that's really the main thing overall when it comes to clothing whether or not we're talking about this one here this detail or this example here it really all comes down to being able to understand the forms that are underneath and then from those forms actually adding in some of the subtle overlaps if you want to add more detail you could um, but otherwise you can keep it nice and simple now I wanted to I wanted to do one more example with you guys um, so here's what I want to do I want to show you guys how to take um, for example this this uh, arm that we drew here and how how it would look like if you were to actually twist some of the forms uh, if you get what I'm saying so like let me go ahead and grab you like copy paste this so like how would um how would this arm look like if we were to maybe rotate it a little bit right and so what kind of twisting would we see on um, on the fabric that we have here All right, let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, also, thank you for the follow, concerned weeb. <laughs> Appreciate that. So, what's really interesting about when what what it, what's interesting about when things twist and stuff is um, when you're twisting the the fabric of something. Sometimes it'll create these things called spiral folds. Now, spiral folds are basically folds that occur uh, when you rotate a form. So, in this case, you're going to be rotating the cylinder of the arm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it outward. So kind of like if the arm uh, was kind of, so right now it's down this way and I'm kind of rotating it. Um, so it's kind of more this way. So I'll kind of add in all these details. Um, here we might see instead some more kind of a dramatic overlap of the, of the folds going here. We'll kind of do that. Um, we'll probably see this outline a little bit more opened out here. Like so. Uh, and then we'll, I think this will relatively stay the same. So the main difference actually is going to be mostly in the, the sleeve right here. And that's where you're going to be seeing some of that twisting. Um, Thank you for watching out, uh, Concerned Weeb. And also, if you guys uh, didn't know, I do have a YouTube channel. So if you guys enjoy the content you're watching right here on Twitch, uh, my YouTube channel also has a bunch of my tutorial videos and even stuff that aren't on Twitch anymore. So my Twitch VODs only keeps for a certain period of time, but my YouTube channel will have all those videos uh, for you guys to watch. Thank you for the support. Appreciate it. All right, so here we got this twisting of the form. So what's going to happen again is we're going to be seeing some of the form start to wrap around here. And so you might see something like this, right? So now that twisting is going to kind of start here like so. And this in itself might actually also create some now interesting kind of triangular shapes. So maybe this will uh, create some like bunching of folds here as the you know, as the arm starts twisting around. So maybe we'll go like this, add a few of those breaks in there. Um, and so we're kind of rotating this arm here a little bit now more uh, kind of like this way. Does that make sense? So this is kind of what would happen here if you twist out that arm. Um, you're going to get some kind of pulling of the fabric there. Maybe this section right here might overlap a bit more. 
Um, you might even get kind of like some interesting kind of S curve shapes there because of the form wrapping around that cylinder shape um, of the fabric. Maybe we'll add some tension right here. That's that seems fine. Uh, we'll go in here. We'll add some of that cuff still. The cuff is going to be moved in here now. Uh, and then here, we're not really going to see the strap as much. So we'll probably just kind of bring that in like that. How to draw juicy lips. What is this? Cooling? No, we have that actually. We already drew um, how to draw lips. Let me show you guys really quick. That's on my stream. Uh, how to draw lips is day... This one? Day five of my boot camp, we talk about drawing, uh, drawing eyes, nose, and lips. So we cover all those facial features. Um, we're on like day 28. So for, th for those of you who are coming in for the first time, um, you're probably catching the tail end of the topics here. The slightly, I would say slightly more advanced topics, uh, like clothing and dynamic poses and stuff like that. But if you guys want some of the more anatomy tutorials and stuff, those are again, uh, available on my YouTube channel. But yeah, those juicy lips. There you go. Um, so this is, again, mostly what I wanted to show you guys was how you can start to incorporate some of that twisting uh, nature here on your designs, right? So kind of wrapping around the forms here like so. And actually, you know what? Maybe, hmm, maybe this actually doesn't have a line right here. Let me think about that. So if you're twisting the form this way and everything's twisting, you might actually get a line that goes like this too. Now that I think about it, that line might shift as the fabric starts to pull upwards instead of downwards. Um, so again, this is kind of just that quick demo I wanted to showcase to you guys uh, to think about, to start thinking about how you can start doing twisting and stuff um, for your forms, right? Um, it's really all coming down to, let me lower the opacity here. It all comes down to adding in here some, twisting, some spiral twisting, um, around the contour there of the forms that we have. Now, in this case, it's going to go twist this way because there's some fabric bulging and stuff. Um, if we subscribe on Twitch, do we get private videos on YouTube? So if you subscribe on Twitch, you will get private videos that are on my Twitch page. Um, yes, but they're all going to be on my Twitch page. But I think more importantly, what subscribing gets you is not necessarily the videos that which is helpful. Um, but for those of you who are curious and interested in subscribing, everybody who subscribes to my channel actually gets access to all the previous day's worksheets with all the PSD files and all the breakdowns. You'll also get access to the cheat sheets uh, that I'll be turning into a digital art book later this year. And you'll also get access to some of the older resources that I have out here as well, which covers all the anatomical things that we've done, like legs, um, how to draw the butt even, all of these things, so these are available to my Twitch subscribers um, if you subscribe. And here's like the, the head sheet and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of what you would get from uh, subscribing on Twitch. But uh, let's see. Okay, um, I think this is mostly all the things that I wanted to hit out here. So we got here the, the shirt, pants, clothing. You guys got any questions in the chat? Let me know real quick. Um, and also do let me know if you guys found this helpful. 